12, 2018 Select Board meeting to order. And we will have a consent agenda. Surplus equipment. There's an attached sheet there. I hope everybody saw it. Uh, designer contract amendments. That's a sub fire station committee. Um, sub fire station uh, sub sub building committee. Building committee. Uh, one day liquor license and the and the change on that is twenty two thousand dollars, correct? On the fire station. On the fire substation twenty two thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. <coughs> one day liquor license, Kessel Land Trust five K for farm lands October twenty first, nine to two PM. Has that been cleared by the chief? Yep. Right. Okay, Hopkins Academy Cross Country, use of the reservoir for two upcoming cross country meets, 918 and 1019. They will provide police detail. Um, I saw that on there yesterday. I checked with uh, Lauren. She, uh, as of yesterday, she had not been contacted yet, but I'm sure that the call is coming. Okay. And one day liquor licenses for the top of the campus, hockey games, Mullen Center concourse concessions in the commonwealth area one license for each space and date 10 6 10 12 10 26 11 8 11 18 11 24 11 30 12 8 and 12 11 and that is our consent agenda any questions or vote first and then questions motion approve second and any Discussion on anything? Uh, surplus equipment. Mm -hmm. Why don't we trade that 97 truck when we get the new one? Uh, no trade, trade. No trade in value? To be honest with you, John, they were going to give us $2,900 for it. I know I'll get more on the uh, Okay. That's what I kind of I know we will. So yeah. that's why I think I put a minimum on that. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. So. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, except for the surplus equipment. Thank you. I accept for the Kestrel Line Trust 5K. Oh, okay. <laughs> you running it? <laughs> uh, we're doing the beer. Do beer the beer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we can go now into the public comments. Anybody here that would like to make a public comment this evening? All right. I guess we'll go right to town administrative report. We're moving right along. You have anything for us this evening, David? Well, the hot crosswalk is finally operational. Uh, so we have Mass DOT was able to complete their work. Uh, the saw it in operation today. The uh, Mass DOT has put up advisory boards, one on the West Street Common and the other one to the east of here, to advising motors of the change of traffic patterns and light signals. But that project is now substantially complete. Those advisory boards will be in place for one week. Uh, They'll probably be removed. Can they leave them there longer? water if police decide? We can put ours up, okay. but it's only going to be obviously one direction. Um, Maybe if they can leave them there a couple out. weeks, two, three weeks, all new students yeah. came back and everything. They have one, um, they have the, the, the one that I saw that was operational this morning, it's down by near the new Pride Station, so it's well in advance. Yeah. Um, we can probably put ours up somewhere in between. No, they were thinking about moving it to the West Street Common. Yeah. That's what they had talked about. Yeah, yeah they originally had the, uh, the advisory board up by in front of the Pride Station, and yeah. it just made no sense to have it there. So yeah. they asked if the they other one where stands used to be is quite a ways back, too, so maybe they could move that one up to the Legion parking lot, maybe? Yeah, I mean, if they can't leave them out and put them where, I mean, I don't know if you can reach out to them and see if they can leave them for longer. If not, we can put ours up in one direction and we can just reach out to the sheriff's department and borrow one of, the, one of theirs that we always use for uh, parades. I'd like to see them up for you know, a month yeah. anyway. Sure. Maybe, maybe yeah. longer because of all the yeah. 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 John, just a comment on the one that's up by stands. Yeah. I did talk to Michael McKay late this afternoon. And he's being a, there's nowhere else, nowhere else but private property. He's trying to work with property owners and move it closer. He okay. is working on that, just so you know. Okay, 
Zuturka Park reconstruction, the final phase, phase three. Uh, we had a meeting out there first thing in the morning uh, in order to come up with the final design change based upon the unwelcome discovery of stumps where they weren't expected to be. So the Park and Rec Commission will be held in a meeting making those final improvements. There'll probably be an additional request to use their portion of the Woodchuck Nominee Trust. That's co-administered by the Park and Rec Commission and the Select Board. It's a balance of uh, 21,000, which will be ample to cover that. So that project is moving forward and we're hoping to uh, clean that up by October. They did reach out to you today about um, you being Marlo Warner about uh, water. That was an idea that just percolated off the top of their head. So they were including you as soon as that idea had occurred. I know that you were a little concerned about being brought into that. Uh, well, the, <clears throat> the the water line that was feeding the bubbler there is from 1954. Um, so we have concerns of galvanized pipe and lead bends. So I talked to Andy Klopacki this afternoon. Um, we got to redo a water line. If they want water at that site, we got to redo it under regulation. We cannot use that water line for drinking water or anything else. So obviously it's a town park, town thing where, you know, we'll cover the cost, but, you know, we'll need to put a meter pit in and proper copper line. Um, so there's, there's some effort there on our end of cost, but um, we will absorb it, and I talked to Andy. We'll want to make sure we get that done before they start doing blacktop and everything, so we don't have to dig in through any blacktop and all yeah. that. But it's just beginning. Somebody's got to come to the department and need to organize it. Yeah. Town Hall fire alarm system. This project is now substantially complete. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall sale update. We had uh, a walkthrough on February, February Friday. September 7th, we did actually have a commercial real estate broker do the walkthrough. They um, posed a number of questions in particular having to do with maybe the town should think about having an overlay district on that uh, property in order to increase its use usability, because right now it's rather restricted under current zoning. So that formal request has not come to the board yet, but uh, it will be an agenda item for next week consider. Who's bringing that forward? It was, an, uh, it was a query from the real estate broker who said that you know, <coughs> in order for you to maximize the price for the sale of that property, a buyer wants to know what they can do with it. They don't want to buy something which is limited in scope and they don't want to buy something that requires some sort of uncertainty uh, or they, they're not interested in, you know, where this is obviously speculation. Um, not interested in putting big money on a project that's going to be limited in the scope. So they wonder <coughs> if the town would be open to thinking about an overlay district which would be more permissive than current zoning allows. So what, what type of overlay? Well, multifamily. Uh, multi it would have to go through the CBA or the... Yeah. So this... Well, this overlay is like would have to go to <coughs> the planning board. Planning board. board. Yeah, yeah, so this is... Historic, this, too. This is a comment that was made by somebody who's walked walking through the property. They have not submitted that comment Perfect formally. But they did say that they would be submitting an application for consideration to be hired as the commercial real estate broker. That's good. Was that walkthrough mandatory for anybody that wanted to, or just optional? No, optional. Okay. So OSHA. <coughs> We've been receiving training on the new workplace uh, requirements that will take effect on February 1st, 2019. Uh, we use OSHA as a, as a uh, way to simplify a vast amount of information. OSHA is actually not involved. This is not a federal enforcement uh, <coughs> requirement. This is coming from the state, specifically the Department of Labor Standards. Um, and there's a number of things that we should be doing. The safety committee will be meeting on next Thursday in order to talk about the kinds of policies and procedures that we should start working towards for an adoption by February 1st. Uh, and we also want to explore the, the um, possibility of having DLS come out and do an audit, a safety audit. Uh, so that, A, we'd communicate to them that we're working seriously on this. 
B, and more importantly, that we're actually addressing worker and workplace safety issues, uh, and see if there are deficiencies that we can that we can correct those well in advance. So is that audit free? That audit will be free. The upgrades probably will. Be. Uh, I know that the state does come out to the fire and they do come out to the wastewater and the water uh, periodically every three to five years with their inspections and they do a lot of safety in, in their major inspections. I've been through two or three of them now. So. Yeah. Our own insurance company does that on yeah. an annual basis and we use that as an as a <coughs> action plan to correct uh, deficiencies. Do you get any uh, discounts on our new policies if we complete an audit like that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, I'm sorry, are you looking for feedback or are you going to pull the trigger on requesting the audit? Uh, let me meet with the safety committee first mm -hmm. and then I'll bring that recommendation back. It seems to make sense to do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> it's like Jaco at the hospital. It's a, it's a safety form for what how our operations work. So, I mean, mm -hmm. certainly isn't anything wrong with that. No, better up to do a dry run than rather get surprised mm -hmm. with the audit finding. Yeah, and keep in mind that we have won awards in excellence and lost control in the past. So I mean, we're no slouches when it comes to workplace safety. Um, their their attitude is that we want workplaces to be safe and workers to be safe, and they're less interested in enforcement, <coughs> and they're less interested in the paperwork requirements that go along with this law. They want to see whatever problems there are brought to light and corrected as timely as possible. So I think these people are going to be good to work with and only good results will come from it. Uh, just running through this, the HVAC project over the elementary school is substantially complete. Just waiting for a processor on the uh, cafeteria side. Elementary school pavilion, that, Tim, you may have an update on this, but I'm saying this is about 50% complete on that project. Yeah, we got the uh, frame up with the help of uh, some volunteers over the weekend. It actually went quite well, which was very nice. On the next phase, we'll be putting the uh, roof deck on, uh, just trying to find time with everybody's busy schedule to do that. And we're going to certainly we, we are working very closely with the school to make sure that we're not interfering too much with their daily activities. After that, um, it'll probably sit for a little while until uh, the metal roof goes on. Certainly that gentleman is with like most contractors right now really backlog because of due to the weather. But uh, we're hopeful that we can get the deck on. Makes a really cool echoing sound off my back deck, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to, uh, we get a noise complaint. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to recognize any of the volunteers that stepped up and are? I'd like to do that at the end, so we have everybody together and, and bring everybody on board. I do hope that you make take a photograph so we can include it in the annual report. Yes, mm -hmm. the, we're taking photographs always. Mm -hmm. uh, good. The audit is going to start tomorrow, uh, next week. They'll be occupying the office uh, behind me. Uh, Lance and Heath will do a week's worth of preliminary audit work, and then they'll come back at, uh, in December to finish up for the FY18 audit with time for our big borrowing for our various projects. Didn't you say you moved upstairs? Me? That's what you reported. Yes. We'll, so we'll, have, an an, we'll have an editorial correction to that, uh, that report. I think he's moved up. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I moved up and then got kicked back out again. So. One, uh, one question about the audit. Are we going to do a, a statement like the auditor said we could do as far as um, select board or whatnot to include in the audit. There was some sort of statement she said we could include as a board. We were talking about that management discussion and analysis mm -hmm. that's at the beginning of it. Because yeah. I had asked the question just that it was, it's, it's rip and read, like prior year, current year, prior year. Right. There's not, no meat to it. Right. So she said that other municipalities do 
enhance that if there's information we want to tell them. They just have to audit the, the numbers or anything. Right. Um, and then the chair of the select board every year writes that letter too. Okay. That goes in. There's a letter that comes from me. Do I suspect any fraud? Have I seen any criminal activity going on? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And because I think that would be worthwhile. Next. American Legion Chicken to Go is September 21st, Fire Association. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chicken to Go is this week at the Legion. Yep. September Sunday. 16th, was it? Yeah. What did I say? You said the 21st, and that's the fire department. All right, so Chicken to Go, American Legion, September 16th. Fire Department Association is the 21st. Library Spelling Bee Fundraiser is September 27th over at Mitiero. Public forum on the special town meeting is uh, October 11th. Special town meeting itself is October 18th. And don't forget to vote on November 6th. Yep. Thank you. And I guess we'll jump into goals and objectives. We have Chief Mason, we have Tim Nyhart, Building Inspector, and David Nixon, Administrator, and we have Marlo Warner's uh, goals and what, what he has done for the department and what needs to be done for the future. So, oh, don't want to do that one. Who'd like to go first and go home? <laughs> Well, I'm listed first. You're you listed first, first? Oh. but you live the closest. Oh. <laughs> and I might want you to stick around for another I'll discussion. Be yeah, yeah. So. you had asked me to stick around. Yes, yes, please. Sorry, Tim. I'll give you right. <laughs> Mine's the longest, and I have the furthest ride, so Mike can go first. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> your party gift. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, so um, you, you have my self-evaluation. That's more of a reader version rather than a kind of talking points. I apologize if that's not the format you were looking for, but um, that just kind of gives people updates and I know it's published um, on the board docs, so um, that's kind of just high points for the past year because we didn't do goals and objectives last year in this format. So for the upcoming year, um, I, I uh, sat down with David a little while back and uh, we had a bunch um, on here and we kind of paired them back a little bit just to be a little bit more realistic. Um, so the first one is uh, just redundancy training as far as law enforcement goes. That's, a, that's kind of continuous, always ongoing. There's always ebbs and flows and changes in staffing and things like that. But I want to make sure that um, every duty that we have is is able to be done by someone in the event that we someone leaves, somebody gets injured, and that includes myself. Um, so, uh, over the course of the next several months, uh, we've already actually begun this. We're going to be making a, a comprehensive list of every single thing that we do, all the specialty positions, and make sure that we have folks that can step into those roles uh, in the event that we have a, a, a unforeseen issue take place as far as our staffing goes. The second one is one that's been on probably goals and objectives for multiple chiefs uh, as well as the select board um, and I know David as well which is to further investigate a potential transition for regional dispatch. I know this is something that um, folks have been uh, asking for more information on. Uh, as I put a couple of little bullet points in there just to give some folks an idea of what we've established so far um, and with some of the changes some of the things that have happened as far as our relationship with Amherst with the ambulance situation and all that and the fact that they did lose their grant to investigate this process and several of the other towns pulled out uh, of the regional dispatch program, this would be something that we would kind of have to start from scratch. So if we decide that it is something that is feasible for us, there is cost savings and there is a uh, positive 
impact in the services that we provide, um, we would we'd be starting from from nothing really and have to kind of build this program uh, the way that they're doing in Hamden County right now. So any for the grants out there right now? No. For regional? No, the, the only ones that are out there right now are through State 911 and those are competitive grants. That's what, with the little that I know about the Hamden County process right now is that they're only doing them annually. You can't apply for the entirety of your grant, meaning if it's going to take you three years to roll it into a, an actual program. Each year is competitive, so if you miss one, if someone else beats you out on a portion of that grant, you're talking about millions of dollars that you're going to have to come up with on your own. Um, that's what I know right now, but it's something obviously that's going to require a lot more, a lot more discussion with some of the folks who are really involved in that process. Is the university um, something you'd be talking to? Um, yeah, I mean, the university, I believe, was part of the original. They were. Uh, they were one of the one of the folks that were on board. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the specifics are. What I what I've been told is that uh, when someone gets one of these grants to investigate these projects, a whole host of departments will sign on. Towns or departments will sign on just because they want the information. They want to know, you know, what what are we going to get out of it? And as things move along, some of those towns maybe weren't really interested at all in the first place and they'll pull out. Um, UMass was one of those. I don't know the reasoning behind it. I didn't I don't know the chief at the who was there at the time or any of that, so I don't know the backstory but they just they just yeah. yeah. Just and they just put in a brand new whole dispatch center over there. Mm -hmm. Well they? and that's that's part of the problem as far as regional <laughs> dispatch goes is that um, one of the things that we were hoping were gonna come out of our, our uh, active shooter um, training that we did at the mall maybe it was pipe dreams on my part but one of the things that I was hoping was going to come out of that was that we would all kind of get on the same page as far as communications go um, we are all on different bands different frequencies different radio channels it is insane how so many small little communities are packed together and we're all using something different yeah. um, so I'm asking just when um, David I sets up the meeting with the chancellor, mm -hmm. you know, um, so the chancellor finally sets it up with us, his, his, his schedule's been the one that's been difficult, but it might be something to bring up at the meeting so at least he hears it. On the radar, yeah. Yeah, put it on the radar if that's something that you want to be pursuing, you know. So well, I think our emergency services are on that radar anyway. Certainly want her to put dispatch yeah. in there too. Using another flavor of that, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right yes. Well, oh, you were talking about just the radio system, the radio initially, or were you talking no, about just the dispatch? The, the concept of applying for a grant right. and, okay. and that you'd be approaching the university yeah. in terms of their willingness to participate and why. Yeah. Because we're him hearing that. A fire, a fire communication center is kind of like a radio station. Yeah. 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 Well, Mike, uh, I wish he was here tonight because Mike has actually recruited uh, one of my officers and one of his firefighters who actually uh, have a substantial knowledge of how radio systems work. Um, and they're putting together um, kind of a presentation to show everybody what we're looking at as far as what we have right now and what we can increase, what we can do better. Um, and it's going to mean getting together with Motorola and these other companies to you know, put up boosters and I don't know the techno I don't know the technical terms for all this stuff, but um, he's working on something right now that hopefully will give folks some more information. But we're we have some some, some substantial issues, lots of dead spots. And the towers are terrible. So I mean, yeah, <coughs> it's not just well, the tower. Yeah, Chief Spankman was in a, a capital planning committee meeting on. Uh, Monday and mentioned that yeah. possibility and putting, I guess maybe switching over to microwaves and yeah, there's like that's, all that's kind it. Of putting towers up on Mount Skinner possibly. Mm -hmm. There's a whole thing. Can show you any of those? The line of sight. He didn't bring any information. To show he, us. He, he's he got these maps. Stuff, he's got these maps that almost look like infrared type maps uh, or, or FLIR or whatever it is. They look similar to that. Where they show <laughs> how good the reception is in certain areas, and it's kind of frightening actually. Um, how 
poorly we're doing as far as our, our reception goes. So he's gonna he's working on that. Um, number three, uh, this one's two parts. Um, the first part is uh, I'd like to establish something that I've never actually seen before um, in the police field. It's uh, it's something that we do every day, basically, mediating uh, issues between folks, but not necessarily in this manner. Um, I'd like to establish a civilian mediation program where if we have neighbor disputes or things that we come across, uh, problems between folks that is just over and over and over and over again and is tying up officers' time and dispatch time, uh, we'd like to just try to start a program where we can pull those folks out of that situation and see if they're willing to sit down in a kind of a neutral location and actually mediate the issue. Uh, we have uh, we have some staff members already, I think five or six, that we actually have already certified as mediators, um, sent to trainings to be certified to do this job. Um, we have to build, we have to kind of establish some policies. I've been in contact with uh, some professional mediation services to kind of assist us in putting this program together. Um, so it's kind of a one of a kind, like I said, I've never seen it before. It's something that I, I think this town could benefit from. Is that something that, I mean, Tim just happens to be sitting here too, but I know, I mean, I know you get like chronic repetitive mm -hmm. noise complaints, mm -hmm. same party calling, same issue, neighbor nuisance type stuff, but you do as well, mm -hmm. fair amount. Tim is uh, actually his the the, policy, the the draft policy I'm working on. His department is actually mentioned directly in the policy because I know that he deals with some of the same folks that we do, just in different aspects. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what we're aiming for. Stuff like that. This is just for mediation, right? Not a civilian review board oversight. Oh no, no, no. This is basically let's try to solve this problem so we don't have to keep responding out to your house. What can we do to like, fix this? Looks like Tim with boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Where do you put the fence? No. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, Hadley doesn't have bylaws on fences. One of the best things that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> and when people call about fences, say sorry, it's a civil matter. But I do. We do help them out. You know, we go through it. And yeah. It's 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 a problem. Bushes are too. I think a service like that would be good though, because if it's normalized, I think mm -hmm. maybe people will be more willing to do it as opposed to when you have a neighborly problem and you suggest doing it and so kind of out of the norm. Yeah, so the, the court systems actually do this free of charge just yes. so they can free up judges and clerks' time before people sue each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of where I stole the idea. Uh, we're not going to be binding, obviously, the way a court would a court mediator would be you know what they decide is binding once they get people to we obviously don't we don't have the authority to do things like that our, our goal is really to you know when we send officers out to noise complaints or you know this this guy threw his leaves on my yard kind of thing when we go out and we deal with those things over and over and over again the situation is always tense the person is always angry at the time it's really difficult for an, uh, anyone even a trained mediator to help in that situation. It's not, it's just not conducive to, to being successful. So the idea is to remove them from that situation, remove them from uh, what's going on in the immediate moment and see if we can sit down at a table and hash these things out using the same tools and skills that they would use at the scene, but hopefully being more successful somewhere else. Yeah. Um, the second half of this is something that I have seen in, in several other police departments, which is essentially using a mediation service, a, a neutral um, certified mediator, uh, to mediate civilian complaints against officers, low-level type things. Um, I'm, I've uh, reached out to uh, multiple different mediation services. I have a meeting set up next week with one in Amherst. They're extremely excited to be a part of um, something like this. I don't know how often we will use it. Uh, we don't get a lot, but when we do, they're really difficult to deal with. Even, you know, just the minor, the officer was rude to me kind of thing. Um, 
I, you know, we got one the other, just to use a, a specific example, we got one the other day that someone called to complain that the officer was too robotic with them. Um, robotic. Yeah, well, this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's difficult to, it's difficult to know what that person was really feeling or yeah. what they mean by that unless you actually sit down and, and talk to them about it. So the idea would be to offer these types of uh, options as opposed to disciplining an officer for something like this and also give the citizen their say um, to, try to, to try to resolve, come to a resolution for the situation. It's one of those ones where, um, you know, I've seen success in, in other agencies, I've read articles about it, and I've seen complete and utter failure, but it really kind of depends on how you roll it out, how you do it, how you present it. Um, so we're going to try to roll it out and present it in the best possible way and, and see how it goes. It's something that's going to have to go through the union and go through the select board for approval, so we'll see how that works. Do these mediation organizations have law enforcement experience, or are they looking at it? I'm person? searching. Okay. I'm searching for folks, and I'm looking for, for ones that, you know, can give me that guarantee that this is a neutral. Understand the roboticness? There you go. <laughs> so I know it's not going to be easy. Um, and so the last one is, uh, the last one I have on the list here is really kind of self-explanatory. It's something that was kind of on my, I believe I, when I was interviewing for this job, I think I put on a five-year plan. Um, what year Four. So we're ahead of schedule. Um, it's uh, to look into accreditation and certification issues. Um, there's a lot going on with, with uh, those. They, they do do accreditation for small agencies, uh, which is kind of their way of basically, you know, an olive branch. Most larger departments have to dedicate a full-time employee to do accreditation. Uh, we don't have that luxury. We can't pay somebody to sit in an office all day long and do paperwork. Um, so they do small agency accreditation. Um, there's obviously a cost associated with both of these. Um, I think their way of doing the small agency accreditation gives agencies like ours a better chance at um, getting to the standards that are required without having to dedicate someone full time to that. But I really want to sit down with these folks and find out how much because um, I don't want to put too much on our plate. We're still kind of rebuilding here and trying to get us where we need to be, and I, I don't want to put too much out there. Certification, similar. It is you know just as prestigious, so to speak, if that's the word you want to use, um, but takes a lot less time and effort, and to be quite honest with you, I feel like with the folks that we have right now, um, we we are already in a really good position to meet all of those standards. We do it because we have to do it and because we want to do it. We want the department to be as good as we possibly can make it, not just to conform with what MGL says. So um, I think it would be more attainable. I think it's less expensive. Uh, but that's really kind of why that's on there, is really to look, sit down with, with Kalia and um, look at what those standards are going to be and see if we can make it happen. And what would be the benefits of this? It's a trophy. <laughs> so, it's, it's, I mean, it's sometimes, a, like when hospitals do their accreditation or certification, it comes with some benefits to it for reimbursements and things like that. But no, I don't. I don't know that. The, I don't know that there are any reimbursements. My understanding is it's probably only cost. But what it will do is it will ensure that if you have that little you know, that check mark that says you are certified according to the state of Massachusetts or you are accredited, um, you have met all of the standards that are the best practices in law enforcement. So that's, I don't mean to be flippant about it by saying it's a trophy, but it's... it's just another set of credentials. There you go. It's yeah. a credit to the department. Yeah. Well, it also helps with recruitment. Absolutely. Yeah. Does it help if something does go, you know, an issue with an officer goes wrong or something, some kind of dispute, you've got that documentation in place and can show that, is it about documentation and that kind of thing? It's, yeah, it's about conforming to the best practices, yeah. so making sure, I mean, obviously, you know, you're always going to have somebody who steps outside the boundaries of what the policy says is allowed, 
that's what discipline is for. Mm -hmm. um, but accreditation or certification puts you in a position to make sure that what that policy says is what the best practice is. Mm -hmm. So my employer is certified and accredited by that organization. And um, the reason they did that was because it helped with civil rights cases and some of the other issues that arise, saying that an agency or department is not properly trained and that's why the officer violated their civil rights. Then mm -hmm. you can take liability off the department. An officer may still have liability for violating the policy, but it takes some of that liability away from the town and the department. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sounds good. That's it in a nutshell. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Next. Yeah. Do I have a vote? <coughs> we have in the past we voted to accept the yeah, in the past, what you do is you take everything under advisement. And then, yeah, and then in another subsequent meeting. Yeah. <coughs> Just in case something else comes up and then we want to go back. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Drive home. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the road to wait. I will. Thank you. All right. Marilla. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, as, as we all know, um, we're leaving in a couple of weeks, so uh, when we were asked to do our self-evaluation goals and objectives way back when, that has kind of changed for this evening. Um, I talked to David and, and Joyce and a few of the other members, and we thought it might be a good idea to, to put a full project update together um, uh, for, for this evening and then uh, uh, do the final update uh, by last week here. Um, I would like to touch a little bit on the uh, self-evaluation that I did not write. Um, and the goals and objectives that I uh, had sent in last year um, because I had started doing them. Um, we had a very productive year in the department. Um, I'm real happy to report with the, with the department's uh, cooperation, uh, the staff's cooperation. Um, I, I bit off quite a heavy goals and objectives last year. Um, and I am happy to report that we, we hit all our targets. Um, and we had other projects thrown in, some other you know, unforeseen things coming along uh, that absorbed a lot of time. Um, the one thing that we didn't complete, but I had, had put in my goals and objectives, was uh, rewriting the water and sewer regulations. Um, the water basically has been reviewed. We've met as a department of water division and uh, management a couple times. Everything's there. It just needs to be put together and then brought to the board. Um, John, as you know, there's been a bunch of ideas we've written down for sewer, but we haven't really dug in uh, for the division. And Every time we turn around, there's something else yeah. that needs to be addressed. But, yeah. but I also, yeah, and I put in my goals and objectives that that was going to carry us into FY19. I just didn't foresee us finishing them and, and um, completing them. But um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a pretty good year, and as you'll see as I present the update on the projects, um, a big part of my goals and objectives was projects and project management. Um, and I would say the project end of things probably doubled in the last year, unforeseen um, with, with different things. But uh, with, that, with that being said, I'd like to move on to the, the actual document that I presented um, to you tonight, the project update. Um, I think one of the bigger projects that, that's out there right now is the Moody Bridge Road project. Um, that project has moved extremely, um, extremely slow, um, you know, really nothing to do with, with our end. It, it's been a slow process because it's a new program that MassDOT has to oversee out of Boston. Uh, as we know, it's a federal grant. So, um, And also the environmental uh, impact on uh, changing the culvert and uh, redoing that road has run into some speed bumps or it's been slowed down. Um, but I do believe last night it, it passed local CONCOM to get the new culvert uh, put in. So the next week or two, I already got the culvert sitting at the yard uh, that's part of our match. We can get the culvert in now. I, when you all signed that MOA, I changed the project schedule on that. Um, I pushed it way out because I knew the stuff was taking way too long to you know get the MOA done. And so we, we have until next June 30th to complete that project. Um, best best case scenario goes out to bid this fall. We remove the bad gravel areas, install fabric, and regravel the whole road, and potentially get uh, a binder down. I'm guessing it'll be the culvert, and then the road work will be in the spring. It, it all depends how this falls out with MassDOT and the MEPA. 
permitting and all that. Um, the one change to the project um, is originally it was put in for five years ago. It was like put in uh, every year. So what we got for the grant didn't change. That didn't go up. We all know costs have gone up. Um, but part of that project was I really think that we benefit by laying down a two-inch binder. I know our match was 20%, but I, I think it would behoove us to put down a two-inch binder before the chip seal. We'll have a 20-year road rather than like a 10-year road and have to read chip seal. Um, we have the money in Chapter 90, so rather than our 50,000 match, it'll be about 100,000, but um, it'll be well worth our money. It'll be well spent, in my opinion. Um, so that's all part of the project. that will be in a folder uh, on my desk um, when I leave. So this project is a little long-winded, but it's really important. This one here, we kind of got to hang on to, and we got to communicate with reimbursements and whatnot through MassDOT. So. Um, Again, that sums it up in a little bit of a nutshell to be more specific in the folders. Um, when I go. And not only that, a lot of these projects, I have meetings in the next week with consultant firms to get an update. Some of them are going to get going, some are going to be completed. So um, this document may change quite a bit between now and, and the 25th. Um, MS4 stormwater permit. Um, we're, not to be repetitive, some of this goes along with David's um, report, um, but the NOI has been put in. Um, we're going to work on year two right out of the gate here, um, set up an IDDE plan. Um, all the drainage in the permit area has been uh, GIS, and we're going to be able to put, I mean, excuse me, uh, mapped, and we're going to be able to put in our GIS as another layer with the water and sewer. So eventually the whole town's infrastructure lands on, on one, one document, and we have all the layers uh, uh, in there. Um, that will be coupled with year two of the stormwater this year, I'd like to get the rest of the town map and get that right in there into the, the GIS layer. So. <coughs> the state's portion is free for the GSI. They're working on time, John. Yeah. With the state. I just spoke to both of them today. Um, chapter 90 projects. Um, the culvert assessment is completed um, with all the other projects going on. I've reviewed it lightly. There's a few culverts that they're going to need to be replacing in the next few years, but there's nothing critical except the one we're doing on Cleet Bridge Road, so that worked out well. Um, with that being said, um, a lot of the culverts can be done in-house. That's what came out of the report, uh, which is a good thing. It'll be a big cost savings, but there's also a couple of them that further down the road, you know, 10, 12 years from now, that it, it would probably have to be contracted out there larger. Pavement uh, management program, I'm meeting with Beta Tuesday. Um, I think they've got all their data together. They've been in town for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm guessing right around my departure that he, he's going to uh, submit that information to me. And, and part of that contract was on the board a, um, um, a run through on, on the results, if you will. Um, the 2018 paving program, thank you, you signed the paperwork tonight, that's complete. Um, water sewer regulations uh, update, I, um, I kind of hit that on my goals and objectives, my, my opening statement. Um, grants, uh, something new to me, I've never, I've never filed for a grant myself, but um, I actually put in for four grants this year. Um, the, the DER one was rejected, but that's not uncommon the first year. That was for a very large culvert replacement on Mill Valley Road. Um, the chances of getting it next year uh, <coughs> is, is really good. And we have a one or two year window to get that large culvert swapped out before a Route 9 project and Bay Road project happens. So it would be really good if that, that, that grant would come through next year. Um, a grant for uh, sewer lining on Route 9. Uh, a grant for reconstruction of Roosevelt Road um, and a $200,000 grant for the, the proposed parking lot across the street here, if that's uh, where that goes in that direction. Um, it'd be really nice if we could see that sewer lining on Route 9 grant come through. That would be a home run for the town. You just, just signed a letter to, him, yeah. to send to the governor's office. We need to contact each one of us really should call the tenant governor's office. Been there here a little bit. Yeah. Because me and you met with her again, and she said she'd do it here. She could to help us out. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to to call her on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
another <clears throat> goals another goal that I had left out was the actual hammering and um, flushing and cleaning of the, the uh, Route 9 sewer mains. We all know what happened with the first 2,000 feet. Um, but we were very successful in that that um, money I received, uh, the 30,000, it got us all the way to, from where we left off with the next actually, it got us all the way from the mall area to Middle Street, including going out behind the Legion and, and over to Middle Street. So that's all in. The report just came in the other day. I poked through it a little bit. There's a couple of repairs that we need to, small repairs we need to do between now and when the reconstruction happens. Uh, example of a uh, telephone pole guide wire rod has been driven through the side of our main, but it's not a critical component of having to replace it right now, but yeah. it was plain as day. Were you able to contact conservation about getting through the, between the Route 9 Mill Valley? No, that was kind of going to be part B of this because I wanted to focus on the actual Route 9 stuff and see what we needed to do with that. Well, we need to talk to Jan about getting in there and accessing yeah. those yeah. manholes in that swamp area, root area, whatever you call it. Uh, it th there's got to be an easement in there, and we haven't maintained it in quite some time. <coughs> we need to get in there and maintain it. So, so who do we act about that? Probably have to go to conservation. Yeah, go to Jan talk, Janice. Talk, talk to Janet and see what. Uh, Probably have to meet with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, it's all part of that project when I, I summarize before I leave. Um, there was one other uh, right near where the, that rod was driven through near the, the bank here. Um, there was one, one service line that's showing a lot of INI. &I. Um, so those are the two fixes we need to do kind of, you know, somewhat soon. Uh, and I'm very happy to report that there's, there's a lot of erosion going on with the pipe all the way down Route 9, but nothing like the first 2,000 feet. So we can plan, we can move ahead, but we, it would be in our best interest to do a little each year and forge ahead so that <coughs> we don't get caught with that emergency stuff again. So. Um, my, my intent in the Capitol, as I explained Monday night, there's, there's monies requested in there to do so many feet per year for the next 10 years so our whole sewer system has been inspected, cleaned, flushed, and, and potentially lined. about that over the last 10 years. Yeah. We want to put it in as a line item. Let's do X amount of feet. Yeah. And the reason I didn't do that is because we've been going through the whole uh, study and everything, and, and as we know, the, the funds are a little thin in sewer, so um, I just projected it out through capital to drive. Just, you know, that was my thinking on that. Uh, Route 9 reconstruction widening. Uh, David's been kind of giving an, an update on that. I don't have any new information on that. Um, but when we when we do hear from them, they come in. Uh, it needs to be, uh, we, we need to get with the consultant firm that MassDOT has and start talk, thinking about an agreement to design the water from here where we left off out to, to East Street. Uh, uh, correcting the sewer in East Street um, area. So again, it, it's kind of been on hold. It's, it's, it's been a, a slow process of getting any information at all at this point, except that they've ran into some issues and it may get pushed out a year, maybe two, is what I heard. But again, yeah. Yeah. Well, my only fear is it starts lining up the same year they want to do the Bay Road Bridge. You know, they had them offset. Now it's like. Let's hope the stars don't align. Huh? Or, or the roundabout and right. cool right. bridge. It's going to be a disaster. I think that's, that's the biggest pain. That's the biggest. Mm -hmm. I don't think they want to start both of those projects at once. No. Although it is the state. Yeah, and then we're, we're looking at potentially 2021 and 22 for the Russellville culvert. That got pushed out in the tip. Yeah. So, we really got to keep an eye on all four or five of these projects hitting at, at once, or even two of them hitting at once would be a real problem. So, um, Mission Electrical, that project basically is is, is done. The project itself, um, we're working on some some uh, a few things we found along the way uh, that were a part of the project. Um, we we do some training. It's been it's been a problem to get the the trainer in uh, from Cutler, Cutler Hamer to get the guy some training on the what we call the transfer switches. Uh, that is scheduled for the 25th. Um, and what goes along with the mission electrical part of this year's um, goals and objectives will be taking a look at the staffing plan. 
uh, once we shape mission to, to have these needs and how it should be used, uh, how we want to use it. Uh, again, that'll be part of my final notes and just abbreviating. Clarifier project uh, is finally closed out completely. The six month inspection was completed with a few punch list items. Uh, was that June? May, June, I believe. Uh, sewer GIS, water sewer GIS, uh, the water's uh, basically done. The sewer GIS, there's money left in that article that, um, again, we've been so busy with bigger projects in sewer, we haven't been able to nail down the tie cards and we want to get them into the, the GIS and that would be the, the service lines, I guess, and the other terminology for it. Uh, Mountain View water leak, um, David's pretty much brought everybody, everybody up to speed on that. Um, that project is, in my opinion, very important to get repaired or get done before winter. Um, as I asked for article money to recondition the Callahan wells, um, what goes along with that, with that 20,000 gallon plus day a leak, um, we have to do the reconditioning of the wells when UMass is closed because we have to open up the valve to, 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 uh, to Amherst to give us enough water to, to cover fires and whatnot. If we can get that leak fixed, we may be just fine without using much Amherst water at all. Um, it's pretty close. Um, so, and as we know, we're waiting on a grant on that. So, um, I think that should be one of the, the number one key things that needs to get done once we're here on that grant. Uh, that, that should be moved on. Um, unidirectional flushing program. We have the um, we have the um, draft in house. We're reviewing it with the water department now. Uh, any notes or changes will go back to Tater and Howard, and um, we'll we'll spin out the, the spring flushing on our new unidirectional flushing program. So that'll be good. Any water testing been done recently? Water testing. You know how you periodically do testing before or after or in between flushings? Yeah, yeah. We uh, well, we have test sites we do every other week um, okay. throughout the year. So and those are good. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No problems. Um, I touched on the reconditioning of the Callahan wells um, with, with the Mountain View. Um, basically, they recommend every five to seven years an inspection in the wells. Uh, we've reached the five years. We are incurring a problem with what we believe in Callahan well one. We're getting, uh, every now and then we're getting a large purge of sand. We're thinking we have a screen problem, uh, something going on there. So that'll be the first one that we recondition and go through. Um, again, it's not a, a critical thing to the drinking water or to the quality of the drinking water. It's just uh, it's producing sand in the system and it raises havoc on the, the filters over the plant too. Uh, filters over the plant, everybody's water meters, everybody's back yeah. flows. Yeah. The question on the uh, test. Yeah. Uh, what is that? That is uh, Mount Warner Wells. We were asked under the sanitary survey in December of 16 to do a prolonged pump test to see what our perchlorate and, uh, levels are over there. Um, <coughs> it, we have a, a consultant firm to do the work, but their DEP is not answering us on what they want us to do with the waste. You can't just dump it on the ground. Um, so we may have to involve the consultant for working with DEP to get an answer to this. Um, you can't just kind of let it go on the ground when you're testing it for high flow and you're testing it for the chlorate and whatnot. So um, they wanted us to do it within a year, but yet we haven't had the answers of how they want us to accomplish the other end of it. So um, miscellaneous projects. Um, the landfill was a, was a project that, that kind of came out of nowhere this year, capping off. Um, the road sweepings and whatnot we, we brought over there over the years. It had to be graded to a specific grade, loam seeded. We installed a small swale, but uh, that's all set. I've sent the email to DEP, and uh, basically uh, Mr. Klein said thank you very much, so I'm assuming that's a, a good project. Um, we've had miscellaneous small projects uh, helping him out with the pavilion. We excavated that. Uh, and we'll, we'll be buttoning that up a black top and low, making it look nice when the, the roof gets on, as you spoke about. Um, in the next week, we'll be working with uh, Chief Spanknable on, on, on that small structure he's putting in over there. We'll be excavating the area and prepping it uh, for, for that structure to be put in place. Um, yard cleanup, that's something that's, go that's been going on since I arrived. Um, we're pretty close. Um, I'm very happy to report that the yard is uh, 
actually looking real neat and orderly. Um, there's a few more things we need to deal with, like screening years and years and years of fill out back, potentially maybe selling it, uh, but that's further down the road. Uh, there's probably 4,000 yards of, of mixed fill out back that is just taking up space. The Route 9 blinking light, we, we spoke about that last night. I'm, I'm going to move the permit ahead here and, and move ahead with the first one, and I believe the letter is going to mass DOT for the second one. And the last thing on the list is uh, we need to get the specification documents together uh, and procured for the septic uh, truck. It's, uh, it's been a pretty crazy summer for everybody with a lot of curveballs, so tactic to keep up with everything, but we've, we've found a way to get most of it done. So yeah. there you have it. We haven't flushed in two years. Yep. Yep. Sounds great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hope that was abbreviated enough. It was. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Good job. Thank you very much. Yeah. Certainly. Go ahead. Um, you can make a motion to nominate Bill Kelly and Sharon Gifford as the uh, interim DPW director, joint DPW directors, I guess it would be, uh, and Marlo departs at the end of the month until we've located a replacement. Second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Marlo, thank you for clearly leaving the department in much better shape than well, when you got found it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really good about everything. Um, but I feel a lot better if the football gets picked up and carried from here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we so you don't want to work too. hard and then have it have it dropped. Well, so, so that that's on us. We'll, <laughs> we'll make sure it happens. I guess I we'll turned this off about your show, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the projects that we talked about, I mean, Bill and Sharon are, are pretty much up to speed on these two things anyways. And we're <laughs> to answer questions in my absence. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll send out a few emails, an example for the senior center library consultants and OPMs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're fully on board. We've discussed you know water sewer. Uh, John and, and the crew's pretty much on board, and we talked about restraps and stuff for that. So the rest of it's just a matter of coming together with some emails, and and Bill and Sharon can be the contacts, and you know they know enough the things come in to involve the sewer department when we need answers from the inspectors and. and their expertise and same with water. So um, I think in the interim, you're in good hands. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Ron. Drive safely. Unless you want to stay, more than welcome to stay, but you don't have to. It's yeah, still on the car, car drive slow. Okay. What's that? <laughs> yeah, it's still on the car, right? It's still on the car. <laughs> Are you going to give me a ride on the last day? <laughs> if you want me to. The ride of your yeah, life. You get a and the speed limit's only 55 on 91, though. Yeah, or is it 65 now? I don't think I have to work out. 65. <laughs> oh, my, my wife's got that one handled. <laughs> All right, next is Tim, building inspector. So this is a first year with... Uh, whole new set of <coughs> family of codes and um, with any regulation all it does is make everything more complex so a couple things that I've seen that ha has happened with the new set of codes is, um, there's a lot more emails coming my way asking me questions uh, some of them I tell them, let's just meet on site, because to me, it's a much easier to go through explanations on sites. But there's a lot more emails coming in, just for the basic uh, questions. And that takes a, a tremendous amount of time. Certainly the number of inspections has increased, in my opinion, for me. Um, and, and it's only because of the complexity of what we're doing nowadays with our buildings. I mean, especially with the mechanicals and everything else, it's 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 difficult. We just don't go on in and spend half an hour going through something. Um, the one of the things that has really dramatically increased in time is the inspections with restaurants. 
there's a whole new requirement for the Ansel systems and everything. And that has taken both, the, certainly the fire department and myself, and Mike, it, uh, prior to even us getting on site, he's spending a lot of time with the contractors, making sure that everything's working uh, for those annual inspections. And it takes us much more time to go through these inspections. So of all, so everything just keeps on multiplying. So uh, it, it's been a difficult year trying to keep things abreast. One of the great things that I can say is with the uh, new firefighters on board, uh, it has completely reversed what our problem was associated with getting on site because before, Mike was the only one I'd get on site and he'd get called out. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on what type of inspection, depends on who or I'm seeing. Is it Mike or if it's um, the deputy chief or whatever, or even Nick. Now it's me <laughs> being late <laughs> on a lot of this stuff because of the complexity of some of these other inspections. And they've really stepped up and helped me with that, which is, I, I really need to point that out to you guys. It's mm -hmm. been really uh, no, helpful. That's good, because that was part of the, that was part of the plan, mm -hmm. making sure they yes. got out there. Yeah. Yes, and. Can uh, are all the engineering firms up to date with the new building codes? No, absolutely that's not. Where it is so complex, them. everybody's scratching their heads. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you, the first <coughs> two or three, uh, restaurant inspections on these new Ansel systems, we, we had 10 or 12 people there all trying to figure out what to do and how to do it with all these multiple relays and switches and it's really difficult and they're looking at all of us to tell them how to do it. We can't tell them how to do it but we have to have. It's been tough. It's been a very, very difficult year especially with those restaurants. Uh, so so what am I finding? A lot of time being spent on the, in the office on the computer trying to answer these questions and trying to make it as precise as I can to, to actually spend the time that I need to do it. And, you know, and, and certainly when there's a little hiccup even on a house, you know, it's multiple inspections that, that happens. And, you know, you need to do that. So that time has been increased for sure. So, that on that end, that's <coughs> that's happened. Of course, the other thing of my job function is zoning enforcement officer, and uh, you know, we've had a few more issues this year, and I think that some have been resolved. A lot of finesse and discussing, and the 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 whole thing that uh, the chief Mason brought up with the uh, arbitration is something that probably could work. With for all of us because it is we're spending a tremendous amount of time on just a handful of issues in town and it's created it takes a lot of time for some of us so and I, I get calls all the time now from the general public with regard to um, their projects and everything and how it, how it should be handled and if even there's one this week it has been hours on site trying to get a, a resolve from a contractor. But that's part of the job and we'll certainly do that. But it does take some time out. So a couple of things that we were handling this year, one was the software. Uh, we wanted to look at possibly upgrading the software to a different um, program in the hopes of what we're trying, our objective in the future, um, we could get a little bit closer to that objective. And you know, last year I pointed out we were waiting for Northampton to uh, come up with a uh, software program. That went south fast and it just it never took off. So what we decided to do was that the, our software program had an update. Unfortunately, uh, that created a lot of problems in house, and it's just being resolved now. And what happens is that, unfortunately, uh, DD has to go back 
and fix information that for whatever reason gets scrambled up. They, 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 there's multiple reasons for that. One is that we're working on a, just a hard drive instead of a networking system. So there's, uh, we're, we're waiting on uh, talk to David about some of the issues and we're going to be getting together with the IT. Uh, Didi's talked to him a couple times about the resolve on this, but it's going to take some time to get to that point that uh, we're not going back and fixing a whole bunch of stuff. <coughs> Uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, the, uh, so comments. it's ongoing. I'm sorry. It's ongoing. It's ongoing. Yes. Okay. Uh, with that, David um, has talked to me about the back room, our files, and uh, he's been helping me. He's uh, landed possibly a grant to uh, possibly get a scanner. He asked me to look into that to see what would work. Um, I gave him an idea of what it is and hopefully we can get this scanner. Uh, still don't know what's happened with the scanner that the planning board had, but uh, we're working on it. I'm sorry? I know. You do? Yeah. What, what, what's <clears throat> happened with that? It's over there. It works fine and uh, you can use it. So we can use it? Yeah. Nobody else has used it, so we can use it. Okay. Great. Great. Then we don't have to go get another scan. Where's it located? It's over at the senior center. Senior that would make sense. Yeah. <coughs> so we'll get yeah. we'll Have they here. finished we'll their scan? No, uh, this, is, this is something I talked about with uh, the planning board is, is that it works fine. Uh, the software works fine. The, there are no distortions with the uh, with the, the copying and the digitalization. Um, so it's just a matter of having the human power to sit there and run things through it, so. Um, and then organize it so you can find it. Yeah. Well, that's another big, huge issue because that's got to be integrated with the, the networking and everything else, and there's got to be a software program to do that. And that's, that's, that's the million dollar yeah. question. What do you get and how do you integrate with everything else? But David's going to apply for a grant in January, he tells me. Right? Okay. Is there anything that the assessor could use as well for scanning of documents and incorporating the two departments a little more well, in line? Marlo the wants to office. use the scanner yeah. too. Mm -hmm. the people who have the big plans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got massive. Yeah, we it's, got water and sewer, got tons of maps, yeah. and then we've got all our thumb towers. Sort of so, so we have a piece of equipment that costs us twelve thousand to acquire, mm -hmm. and it works. And so we should make use of it. Maybe we can find volunteers that would like to there's another, participate. There's a project for you, Massive. So what about the tax work off? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Work off program. Yeah. That would be great. Well, I mean, great use. It's fine to just have one person take all everything and throw it in the machine, but what do you do with it? Right. How do you, where do you file it? Making sure it's done correctly. Because right now everything's by parcel, street number. So you pull the file the file out, the folder out, it's everything for that house or what, or that business. Well, I mean, at a, at a really basic level, just a matter of coming up with a naming convention, you know, so that each document that gets scanned is labeled Mm -hmm. Whatever your protocol is, parcel 409A, but you know, yeah. ho however. What is it? Yeah. yeah, but but so I think once somebody dictates that and they can easily identify it on each document, then just to get it scanned and imaged, then when we have a more elegant content management, you know, filing system, then you know it'd be more obvious how those get indexed and the like. How how much are you integrated with the state right? Nothing. The state was supposed to I thought come was up with a program that and integrated with all the towns, and I what they, they did was that that they're totally years, separate. Four or nobody years ago. Yeah, that's totally separate. We'll eventually get there. It's just again finding the manpower and the people to do it. Because there's a 
ton of paperwork in the in paper in that back room. So it's going to be an issue. Um, but I think they skipped over one implement of nuisance blight by law. Yeah, that's our favorite one, too. Yeah. So yeah. Favorite. Well, I'm just going to leave that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, to the end? Well, you're um, getting to I'll, your future goals, so we might just. So, uh, as you're aware, we have a new um, bylaw for nuisance and blight uh, properties. We had our first meeting on that, and what we have done is categorize these blight properties into three categories. One is the ones that will most likely take as tax title for whatever reason. People have walked away or we, there's no claim to it. The other one uh, is going to be the abandoned houses uh, without, without being occupied. Uh, most of those are now controlled by banks or, or an agency. And that's where we're going to try to push, push them to do something with them instead of just sitting on them. Uh, so we're, we're getting that together. And you know, it's, it's just starting. Where does sure. uh, Getty fall? The Sorry? Old, the old Getty gas station, what category does that fall into? That's privately that, owned, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's abandoned. Okay. Um, yeah, that's one of the first ones they'll be getting the letter. To, yeah, but I mean, there's no bank, but it's not in foreclosure no. or anything. It's just a private owner. That's a private owner. Yes. Right. That just doesn't right. know what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's certainly a lot of complaints. Of course, there's a few we all know which ones they are. Everybody's complaining about them. That's the first one. The other one was just came down Monday. So, right. those things. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> Sad though it was. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and the third category is, um, no, I'm sorry, I gave you the third category once there. Mm -hmm. um, the third category is the, the blighted houses with people still living in them, mm -hmm. still occupied. And uh, there was a lot of discussion on how to handle those. And, you know, uh, you know there's, and most of them are people that are in trouble. They just don't have the ability based on you know, uh, financial or medical reasons that they have the ability to uh, fix up their properties. And, you know, uh, there, was, there was discussion on one property, let's, you know, yeah, we know that there's an issue there, but should we really go after something like that? And, and, and the, the, that's where we're going to have a lot of discussion between the different departments and, and and people to, you know, how should we handle these things? And it's going to be, maybe maybe we can find some person that's close to them and talk to them and see if they can talk to the people and find out what the town could possibly help out. Or a uh, landscape company or something to donate. <coughs> I think there's going to be a lot of possible ways that we can handle some of these. Tim, are these mostly landscaping issues, or are we talking more like Everything. landscaping and hoarding? Yes, or? yeah. I think what you're going to find out, even the ones that have landscaping issues, they're mostly hoarders. Okay. Uh, and we've, we've dealt with those. They take a long, long time. Yeah, they do. The um, housing court does have a program for that, and uh, we can look into that. The last one that I took through housing court, um, it, it it wasn't as good as it could have been because I, I personally felt that there was a bit of shaming to the person, even yeah. though they were trying to reach out and try to do something for this person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's, it's education. It's a very delicate situation. It is extremely delicate. And we do have a number of orders, unfortunately. Every community does. Yeah. Yep. Just the of the population. We'll work on that, but to, to that's my primary objective this year to get that up and running and, and try to work on some of these pro properties. But. So I'll just give you one comment. Um, since I've dealt with your department over the last year or so, um, both my Builder, who's typically been dealing with Amherst and Springfield and, and those areas, was uh, impressed with the 
communication and the ease of access to uh, yourself and Dee and, and whatnot. So, and uh, thank you. Overall, it was a very uh, good process. So. Appreciate that. Yeah. We don't get many compliments <laughs> all the time. It's all we <laughs> This is before I was on the board too. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good. All right. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? And future. Mm -hmm. You know, I, a couple years ago, I came in asking for five hours, five more hours. I, I think we really need to start sitting down and looking at what the future of this department is going to be and how we're going to handle it. Um, it's it's problematic. I, I'm, you, you've all asked me on the side, how do you how do you get everything done? We don't. We can't. And. You know, the great, the best thing that I can say is we have some really, really good contractors in this town that are very cooperative. That if they, I, I do things by photos, they'll send me a video or something instead of me running up there and looking at something. I'll, I'll do it by photos. I'll do it whatever way we can keep things moving on them. Because there's days that I'm 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 slammed. I'm, I can be slammed for two or three days, but you know I'm holding them up. I said, I'll work with them all the time, mm -hmm. but we really it's not going to always be that way, and no, it's and really you look good. At problem. Just I mean we we've seen it up close and personal with private projects. I mean one project with to your point a contractor who's less than compliant less than a, above board quite honestly throughout the process look at the time suck for you mm -hmm. and Mike and, and you know Everybody. other people in town conservation commission compared to reputable builder and I mean the Homewood Suites it's been going very well to me that's a priority project because mm -hmm. I see that as a, a, a good thing for the town a lot of money for the town and I want to keep that thing on on schedule. So yeah, I have 72 hours to do an inspection, but I prioritize those. And then if I have a contractor that I've already set up, you know, especially around town, I mean, I, these guys have really been great with me. Mm -hmm. I'll call them up and hey, hey, can I put you off until later on this afternoon? <coughs> They're always good about that. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said, if, I, if they can't, we'll do it by photos. Uh, they'll send me something and I say, yeah, it looks good. And I mean, I have a good rapport with a lot of these guys. I don't have a good rapport with a lot of the guns that come in from south of here, and that's been problematic. And that can spend a lot, we can spend a lot of time with some of these guys that come up, that, that, that the slip shot. Mm -hmm. And I, I always reach out to everybody in this town, please, we have good contractors in here. Yes, it's going to cost you a few more dollars, but you're going to get a good product. If you get somebody from South, I'm not saying they're all bad, but boy oh boy, we can spend hours dealing with real shoddy problems. And that is, I mean, it's, it's not always dollars. David can attest to that on his project. That was a massive yeah. Undertaking. Thank you. Just a question on that, real quick. Is uh, if you, it looks like in here you were requesting maybe hiring a part-time person, twenty hours a week. Inspector. Um, mm -hmm. is, are there fees already in place that could pay for that person? Is would that be something the town would have to fund separately? Um, how would that? Well, is there a funding structure in the inspections department that your salary and that person's salary would kind of come from fees? Oh, yeah, we almost every single year we, we give back money. Mm -hmm. Certainly last year we gave a tremendous amount of money. Not as much coming this year. And that's what you're going to see. It's going to be a little like Um Yeah, we, we will adjust fees to make sure that we uh, cover any and all hours that are here and if we can get more hours 
uh, you know, we can do a little bit more on, on dealing with signage up and down Route 9. And that's one of my last things to deal with. We give out, we get out tickets on that. I mean, we're not giving out tickets like we used to. Uh, we don't have the time to do that. But, you know, those, uh, those type of ways of financing can bring in some money. That we will, you know, if, if, if there is an agreement of looking at hours, increased hours, we will make sure there's an adjustment to, to cover those costs. Well, I'm not asking for just, you know, some more hours without some type of adjustment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. And you're hanging around for the... Yes, I'm hanging yeah. around. David? Uh, okay. So first of all, I always report on all these projects and uh, I just want to acknowledge explicitly that my accomplishments are only possible by working with many departments and I thank the staff, the volunteers, the elected officials, many of whom work very long hours for their many, many contributions to make the town of Hadley a better place to work, enjoy, visit and live. So thanks to all. and. At the end of my presentation, somebody invariably says, uh, and then there's all the other stuff. So I'll start by saying then there's all the other stuff. And you can read about that in my uh, weekly reports at www.hadleyma.org. So goals and objectives for 2018 this past year. The first one was strategic planning. The select board continues their work on developing a five-year vision of the town. You know, I'm closely aligned with that project and a lot of the work that I do uh, is in line with your strategic visioning. So towards that objective and with the guidance of the select board, uh, I helped the departments in presenting the first ever administrative support of higher order functions uh, report. And this assignment asked each department to summarize the administrative functions annually performed in each division to identify personnel dedicated to each function and to offer suggestions on how to utilize administrative staff to perform higher order functions such as economic development, community development, strategic analysis, planning. So we presented that to the select board for, for, for your review and action. We've had a chance to have some many meetings about this and in order to provide uh, additional support for financial planning and the financial management. And we have some ideas that we can implement this fiscal year as well as some planning ideas for FY 2020 in the next budget season. Also with the guidance and support of the select board, we reorganize the way that we put together the FY 2019 budget. Typically what happens is uh, the budget papers go out to the departments. Departments individually put together their budget presentations and then that's all assembled with very li little cross-coordination or integration with similar functions within each division. So this time we decided that we would have each division put together their budgets in coordination with other departments within that division with an eye towards the <coughs> goals set by the select board as well as to achieve efficiency. So this has now become a model for going forward. Uh, I thought it was a very successful endeavor uh, and uh, I think it, came, it resulted in a well-integrated approach to enhancing services. Following the, the advice of the Department of Revenue, the town undertook the process of converting the positions of elected tax collector and elected treasurer to appointed positions with the help of Sue Bulawatsky and Linda Sanderson who are currently performing their jobs excellently. Uh, they voluntarily moved their uh, positions from elected to appointed positions with the uh, approval of town meeting to ensure that they will remain in their positions to continue to do the good work that they do and when it's time for them to find other things to do, the town has the ability to recruit the best possible replacement. So 
Right now, these are filed as legislation. I've given the House numbers. We need a senator in order to take it to the next step, but we are in the legislative pipeline for accomplishing that, and I'm hopeful that we have this in place by the turn of the year. Goal number two, we knew at the last year we had a whole slew of the agreements that we had to negotiate. These were union negotiations, these were community partnership agreements, these were service agreements, and uh, they were impact agreements, and we were able to settle almost all of them with the exception of the ambulance service agreement with the town of Amherst. We decided to discontinue that agreement and we started a new ambulance service and set up the contracts for that. Um, we were also able to do the impact bargaining related to health insurance and payroll changes with uh, the union, so that now is settled. Goal number three, very important to the town, is uh, revenue enhancement and financial management, so two parts here. Revenue enhancement, we developed new revenue streams wherever possible, uh, such as the medical marijuana and adult use marijuana and net metering credit opportunities, to adopt fees to discourage delinquency and annual licensing, that's under review right now. And we were able to increase our revenue by $112,000 in the last fiscal year. We also developed special revenue opportunities, such as funding th projects through the state budget. Working with Representative John Seibach, we were able to uh, acquire $100,000 of funding for the Lake Warner Re Dam Reconstruction Project, as well as $75,000 for the Senior Center Project. And that's not counting all the other good work that the representative does for us. We had the departments review their permit fees to make sure that the uh, fees reflect market conditions, that fees are being assessed for a full range of services, that we're not giving stuff away for free, and that fees adequately cover the town's expenses in both issuing permit and, and administering or monitoring the license activity. Um, that's the, this is a project that's ongoing. <coughs> part of a discussion for the uh, department head meeting today. Uh, we were able to secure with town meeting vote, uh, support the ability for <coughs> licensing uh, uh, authorities to set new fees without further town meeting approval. So in the past we had to bring things back for a vote and have the debate and now we can just do it with proper notice. Um, we also spent time re reviewing and coordinating payment schedules and tracking responsibility for those payments, uh, 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 payment schedules. We have a whole bunch of special contracts and sometimes it can be easy to get lost in what pilot payment uh, uh, is associated with which project and whether the escalator clause has been implemented or not. So, uh, particularly in a, an organization which is very horizontal in its organizational chart where you have diffuse authority, it's uh, easy for, for people to lose the communication that's necessary. So we were able to identify a couple of missing payments and we were able to correct that. Uh, enforcement for non-payment, state law allows municipalities to revoke and deny, suspend permits where it's people are in arrear for more than 12 months working with town meeting. We adopted a local bylaw that eliminates that 12 month waiting period, clarifies ambiguities in state law and allows for more effective enforcement of payment obligations. And Tim talked about the nuisance property bylaw, which if, when we enforce that should uh, help uh, improve the tax base. Other revenue enhancements, senior tax work off, we are working with that. We have the <coughs> Veterans Tax Work Off Program. And we had our first uh, real internship program this summer, and we all have come to recognize the value of uh, Mr. Rotuno, who did an excellent job and helped projects out. In terms of financial management, this is an accompanying goal. Uh, we continue to, um, using standards and best management practices developed by a whole bunch of agencies 
in order to monitor our financial condition. Uh, we have developed metrics that reveal useful information about expenses, revenues, debt, OPEB, my favorite, and <laughs> enterprise funds. Uh, each measurement is documented in both table form and as well shown as the multi-year trend line. And some of these date back to 2003, so we have some real history on some of these. These are appended to the back of the budget book, so we have an opportunity to review them. Not only is this an opportunity to see how well are we doing in a particular measurement or metric, but it also provides the basis for developing financial management uh, policies. Also coordinating with finances to achieve special projects. We have a number of major building projects and infrastructure projects. Each needs to be planned in terms of engineering, design, construction phases, <coughs> planned in coordination with time schedules with other uh, related projects and planned in terms of maintaining as stable an impact on taxes as possible and finally planned in terms of compliance with Massachusetts laws governing tax levies and borrowing limits. And Ms. Linda Sanderson, the treasurer, has done an enormous amount of work to coordinate these projects' finances. We're overdue for doing another one of these because we have another number of changes and delays to some of the building projects. So we're going to have a meeting and make sure that we're coordinating the finances so we're borrowing just enough at the right time so that each of these projects can move forward. Goal number four. A relocation of the, um, the town administrator's report. I report here that I have in fact moved my office and that in fact has not happened. So you can just write here, not. All right. <laughs> There's a couple of times that I came close and then I got turfed out by one thing or another. So I will work to make that happen after the auditors are done with that room. I'll move in there. Goals and objectives for 2019. So this is what David, I. David, how much is a pod rental? How much is a pod rental? Mm -hmm. For the parking. For the parking. Put a pod with a desk and a chair in it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they took the cars off the animal cracker <coughs> boxes. So. Oh, that's right. Uh, I actually have that information downstairs when when we moved everybody out for the uh, for the uh, the floor. For the floor. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, goal number one, strategic planning. So again, we're going to be working together on strategic planning. Obviously, public safety is a very important um, uh, goal for, for the select board as well as maintaining level services, IT uh, fit efficiencies and so forth. So continue with the budget development by coordinating divisions rather than individual departments to achieve the goals developed by the select board update or create important financial or an operational manuals manual, such as the FY 2020-20 budget document. You've started on us working on the 10-year capital plan and the central financial policy manual so that we have all these policies in one place. Uh, goal number two, working with the committee, replacing and orienting the new DPW director. This will be a big task. Another big task will be the building construction overview and management for the buildings for the library senior center fire substation. And goal number three, I like it so much I had another dub goal number three, the infrastructure improvements. So we have Mass Department of Transportation. Uh, it's committed to several major road projects, some of which are probably going to be pushed up, but the last project schedule I had was 2019 the rotary, 2020 the Bay Road Bridge Repair Replacement, 2021 the widening of Route 9, all of which is going to take a lot of coordination both internally as well as with our external partners, PBTC, PBTA, University of Massachusetts and the Chamber. Goal number four, continuing with revenue enhancement and financial management. Goal number five would be to put together our legislative delegation. This is obviously a regional challenge to put together our legislative delegation and make sure that we have a, a caucus or a coalition that will promote the needs, values, contributions, and interests of our region. So 
So if you have any questions, there's a lot there. Happy to entertain them. Thank you very much for thorough report as usual. Yeah, so staffing. Yeah. Um, so it seems like, it, and this goes back to the, um, you know, the, the work that you did on whatever your new acronym is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of that had to do with, with kind of right sizing and figuring out the appropriate staffing level. And I know, I mean, again, we have a distributed uh, team structure, so, you know, with a lot of elected officials in town hall and the like, but um, I, I think maybe under its own thing or under strategic planning. Um, it seems like that should be, I mean, developing an appropriate staffing plan, which is going to have to happen for the budget process anyway. Right. But. Well, that was one of the reasons why I had Mr. Rotuno uh, update the service delivery plan, because mm -hmm. that is a, that is the basis for putting together a staffing plan. But you're absolutely right. It was part of the ASHOP process to see what we can do about making sure as much administrative support is placed uh, strategically so that I can have and other department heads can have the time to think strategically about the town and not be distracted by every telephone call or, or whatever that comes in through the door. And then the other thing related to that would be, you know, for years we've identified um, the kind of three areas of focus for public safety, but then human resources and information technology. Mm -hmm. And um, much like kind of, um, you know, through the financial management team, you know, we, we don't have a finance director, but finding creative ways to move the ball forward or make things better in the absence of the actual hire of a professional in that area. I'd like to figure out how we can resolve some of those the lack of those functions you know, between information technology and human resources. Right. And my sense is, is that we've been spending a lot of time appropriately uh, updating and upgrading our public safety profile mm -hmm. our, in our services. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, a, that's a, an appropriate way for us to start forward. But maybe it's time for us to think about the resources that are necessary for HRIT this, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, finance, finance director. Yeah. Um, I don't think that we haven't thought about them. It's a matter of money. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, you put you put your finger. Let's pull right all on this. Like, pick this tree you know, out here, and we'll put, we'll put those things in place. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. But so. you can break the problem apart, right? So, like human resources. But well, we know we've needed that for the last five years. Yeah, and and it's I mean. Unless there's a miracle with the revenue, we're probably going to be sitting here having this conversation again when it comes budget time that we don't have yeah. the money. So, mm -hmm. so you know, there are multiple ways to attack a problem. So what I'm saying is, from a strategic planning standpoint, there might be a short-term, intermediate, and a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. And it would be, I think, good to spend some time working on that and trying to figure out what, what does that look like. So, like IT, we stopped the contract with Paragus and we've gone with Northeast IT Consulting because we thought that they brought a higher and better skill set to the table. Still doesn't resolve our IT, a lot of the IT issues we have, but we should have a plan in place as to how how we're going to address these things. Other than Plans are great. We've got the money to go with them. It's always good. I mean, we've got to have some goal, but we've always known that these things have been needed. I mean, they're not new. Um, it's just a matter of how do we get to that point and to attain that goal. And we've talked about this goal in the past for the past few years. Um, much needed HR, I've been saying that for a number of years also. And so hasn't Joan and Linda, you know, to have them take over the, what they do for insurances and grievances. And there's just a whole list of things that goes into HR, not just handing out the payrolls and keeping track of money and bondings and things of that nature. 
um, which that comes out of their office also. But, um, but somehow we need to go through the process of fleshing all of that out. Yeah, I was going to say what we're trying to do with the capital um, plan is devote a certain amount of cost to capital, or a certain percentage of the budget to capital expenditures each year and project that out a little bit. Is there anything we can do to look at projections in our budget and try to forecast out those positions, whether it's six months out or five years out, you know? Well, capital is money that comes into the town that you're able to spend on different projects. When you're adding HR and IT and things of that nature, those are things that are permanently in your budget and permanently um, being used each year. So but I'd argue set. that capital should be something that's permanently in our budget too, and we should be forecasting so that we are managing our capital and our future growth needs and that kind of thing, um, and we trying to we get didn't that even down. Have that luxury because until we were able to get the tax, the, the hotel tax, and the yep. food tax. So and that's what I was going to say. We didn't even have that money. Because right now we have free cash coming in. We're hoping to buy a bunch of things with cash, with that free cash, instead of maybe having more of a plan in place where we have a certain amount for these recurring items mm -hmm. that we can forecast in, incorporate that free cash into our budget, and maybe have some money there for, you know, other staff that would be beneficial to the town. Yeah. Just I, an idea. No, you know, I, I'm not I, saying it's perfect. I was thinking of, of modifying the, you know, that there's a one goal for the replacement of the DPW director, but maybe that goal is a little bit more overarching in terms of staffing structure or something like that so that we don't lose sight of it. And so that we have to talk about the what before we talk about the funding, right? Because some things can be outsourced, other things shouldn't be outsourced or be, wouldn't be effective to outsource them. So certainly this is good for another meeting discussion to have. Yeah, I'm, I'm just providing feedback to David on mm -hmm. what I'd like to see. That's all. Because I thought that was what we were doing. Yeah, that's good. David, I was wondering where the Hadley report was too in the description that's your yeah you know I was thinking about some that weekly podcast that I like to see podcast YouTube channel yeah so so uh, I think that we need to you know we've been, I've been feeling my way along this in terms of content you know I started out with a laundry list of projects and where we were with them and, and uh, what was coming up and then I thought maybe we should organize this a little bit more topically and so I started talking about Doing the DA league check in on the ambulance service, doing a discussion about grant funding. We have the uh, the building projects coming up uh, the next next time, and uh, and I also talked a little bit about unfunded mandates and how we have to deal with that. So I was thinking it might be appropriate to start reporting on that in terms of thema thematic of, uh, issues that are coming up that would be important to not only for us to talk about but for the audience to see and listen and hear. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys alive down here or what? <laughs> Do I save the big conversation for longer meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time to move on. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we will thank you for your you. goals and your objectives. Appreciate it. Um, the next thing was the landscape partnership grant. And I thought that um, this actually could be put off for another thing because this was kind of just thrown at us at the last uh, well, I didn't even know it was on the agenda until I called David on Tuesday and said, what's this doing on the agenda? So we have the Kessel Trust is looking for approximately 320 acres, three parcels of land that abut the Chimur Bay Roads. And I think these things need to be out in the public um, so that people understand yeah. that, you know, 320 acres of town land, all of a sudden we're going to give it to Kessel Trust or keep it in... Uh, make it uh, preserved in some way, I think needs to be brought out. 
ahead of time, being, certainly because of the restrictions that they want to put on it of uh, retaining the right to <coughs> conduct for not contain, retaining the right to conduct forestry, non-motorized outdoor recreation. And I think we know that, you know, some that's, people... That's my gold mill right there. Yeah. yeah. And I have one comment on that. That was brought, you know, that came yeah. to my mind. <laughs> that's so. been discussed through DCR, that's been discussed through Kestrel, and mm -hmm. none of them want to talk about it. Um, also, the restrictions on hunting and fishing that they tend to place on their lands yep. is, a, is a no vote for me. Yep. Um, unless we have an absolute guarantee that the land will be unrestricted for hunting and fishing purposes. So. Well, that's well. The thing I was going to say is that when I read this, I thought that we should bring Kessel in mm -hmm. and um, have a discussion with them, and not us just be discussing it ourselves. So I would like to table this until our, our next meeting. Uh, I, and I think there was some deadline, David, isn't there? Yeah, Joyce is right. This was thrown at us uh, very much at the last yeah. minute. And I did complain about, you know, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, and they have it. Just, just doesn't give us enough time. It is a grant opportunity. They're looking for a letter of interest. Uh, I have told them that to, to pick this up for real on your next meeting. Mm -hmm. I think the Conservation tonight. Commission was writing a letter to the select board. Well, yeah. they are, but I mean, I don't think that they've taken in the repercussions of what the restrictions are and what, what I, they might I'm be. But I mean, that's, that's I know, and I, I did read Janice's yeah. letter also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we did get that also. So anyway, we're going to table this till our next meeting so we can have a little bit more input from um, public. The public. Yeah. And so post it a little bit. Yeah. sooner rather than later. Uh, there's a water abatement on, at 44 Mount Warner Road. Um, that was a mistake. There has been no water to that property, so I'd like to entertain. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Old business, not so old. Yes, um, Senior Center Library and Fire Station updates. Uh, I'll just say that we have nothing further on Fire Station update. We have our next meeting next Monday night. Um, we're supposed to be a public forum on the presentation of it, but I think that will be delayed because we do have a select board meeting next Wednesday. Um, Senior Center and Library. Planning board voted last night to move it till next week so that they can reopen it. There does not to be does not need to be a new application uh, for the downsizing of the building. Um, and I didn't know if anybody else had anything from library or or further. We did have. Um, oh, we'll we'll do that part first, and then the the building committee. Uh, had a meeting afterwards too um, that was last night so anything on the library tonight uh, library when did we meet Monday 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 night the library building committee met um, and just uh, you know kind of had some discussion just to make sure everybody was um, up to speed on um, what the change in direction was relative to the senior center project um, and then really focused on um, the schedule for the fall so that action doesn't have an immediate impact on the library. I mean, we're continuing with the same schedule that we had been on relative to the design process. So we're working on the actual building design right now. Um, so we'll have a handful of uh, additional meetings between now and um, the end of the year. Uh, and then there was um, some discussion about making sure that we stayed close to whatever the outcome might be of this next design phase with the senior center um, because it will have an impact on the actual construction schedule um, no point in speculating on that now but you know if you think about it originally we had senior center senior center shovel in the ground building gets built Everybody moves out, hooker comes down, library. And then we already knew that we were, that wasn't gonna quite, quite work. So we had already started that conversation about coordination in terms of swing space. Um,
but the OPM for the library did say, you know, we should have it on our radar that um, the, de the delay uh, in the redesign for the senior center and then them not being able to start until a later date, that that could put us in a situation where we're going to have far more significant potential overlap for construction periods, um, and that could have uh, an impact on looking at, um, are we going to have two? to completely separate construction projects going on? Is there some way to have one contractor working both? Um, or should we be looking at a further spreading out of those projects because of that? So just have it in your mind that the scheduling is going to be a discussion topic. OK, that's what we talked about. So the building committee met last night uh, and had their input into this. And do you want to? take it from there Tim or we, we they talked about setting a schedule yeah well we started talking about all right if everything goes well let's back up let's say this is when we want to start these projects and back back out of that and set defined dates uh, that we should try to hit for certain specific issues meaning I mean one of the things that we talked about for the senior center was um, what I brought up I got a full set of drawings months ago mm -hmm. for this drawing for this project and we talked about 60% let's set the uh, senior center at 60% to uh, for the planning board review process instead of 100%. Why go through the entire design of a building if there's a hiccup? So Dave Tugin, since he does this for a living, suggested that maybe state to them, do a 60% goal, let's get it through planning, and What's that we'll time frame? Tell them what the 60% yeah, entails. Yeah. The 60% is site, uh, basically the footprint of the building, uh, how everything works within it, the elevations, what it looks like, but not get into the details of the, of the construction of the building, per se. Inside. Inside. Mm -hmm. The mechanicals and everything else. Wait until we get approval for the outside design uh, uh, yes site plan. Site, so, site, 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 site plan yeah and mm -hmm. and with the issue with library when should we start thinking about vacating the building so we set we we worked off of just saying going backwards and the time frame was like february no this might not be the time uh, the time that we should be vacating that building because David brought up a valid point. You know, we have to go out to bid and everything else. That's a big process. But uh, our main discussion was let's let's set set some dates some uh, to try to uh, hit to to uh, keep everything rolling forward properly. Uh, and if it might be February that we should be vacating that building. Let's try to think about some time frame of vacating it so we can take down the building. So we I'm keep sure everything. Where's coming from? So I know, I know in the past the library, the discussion we had was the earliest that January well, 2020 would be the demolition. End. Yeah. But it, it would be the, the earliest that we might have like something that, that was that ready to Bring the bulldozers yeah, in would be the end of the first quarter. Yeah. It was January of 2020. They need to be yeah, the starting to first demolish. But we so have so we have until 2020. That's what the library, library says. Library, correct? Oh, in terms of meeting, it, yeah. So there are two things. So in terms of meeting the the um, schedule goals of yeah. that were laid out by the grant yeah. uh, overseer. Yes. yes. Yeah. The the library has until 2020. 2020 to actually start the demolition of the senior center. Mm -hmm. uh, finish the project, right? Or finish no. the project in 2020, yeah. Are we no, in dispute about Shovel into the ground. This? Shovel in the ground. Shovel in the ground, 2020, January 2020. Yes, that would be like start. the drop dead. 
and then the, the earliest that they could, so looking at it both ways, the earliest the library could even be in a position to start construction, let's, let's say there was no senior center at all, would be the first quarter of next year. So that's why I was asking this, if you're talking February of 2019. 19. But we well, don't so, need to do that. At but that we point. don't need to do that. Correct. But I think, I think we want to know between, all, between the committees is when does the library, how much time do we have between now to actually, if we could get a shovel in the ground for the senior center by spring, mm -hmm. yep. and they don't have to take down that building yet. They right. have until 2020 of January? To well, I, that's when they need to start. So obviously they'd be yeah, in there be a bit before that. Yeah. But best case scenario, dollar wise, is that we have, you know, say, um, four months of paying rent to be somewhere else before we get into our new building and they start knocking down Hooker School. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, I mean, it, it, it would seem to come up with that. You want to have the right parties in the room, right? Right. So you're talking about a joint meeting. Yes, yeah, so joint meeting. Have let's let's have some and goals. I, and I think, and that is, I love the idea of everybody sitting in a room and talking about things prior to making independent decisions, mm -hmm. which seems to be happening a lot. Um, Occasionally, yes, that's and, true. And um, the thing is, I need just a week for things to fall, to, for me, if I'm gonna be honest, I was out of the country last week when you made your motion. Um, I don't feel like it was completely transparent. I'm an honest person. Um, I'm not saying you're not, but I speak my mind. I'm doing my best to take the deck of cards that were thrown up in the air and landed on the ground, and I've been back at work for two days, and put them back together and make sense of all of the different things that are going out there in five different directions. So having everybody in the same room is the most sense I've heard in a long time. And I'd love to do that. Um, I need at least a week. I'm meeting, my building committee is meeting on Tuesday. Um, there's a lot of scenarios being thrown out. Um, I need some clarifications. Um, on what you came up with, um, but I'm gonna. On, on this line, I would like to make a motion right now that we vote to reverse the decision that was taken last week to reduce the senior center size to 10,350 square feet. I have with me the uh, vote count from the town meeting uh, on August 2017 when the voters brought forth the senior center to go from 9,500 square feet to 12,000 square feet. It was an increase of cost of the senior center of $1.8 million. That motion was approved 414 to 62 for that larger square footage of the senior center. So the voters have already voted that they want the senior center to be 12,000 square feet and somehow we as a select board were able to reduce that square footage so that the voters are now getting less of a building for the same money that they voted for and on this issue i've received a lot of comments from people people are really angry about this decision and i think we should reverse that vote First, let me say. So that's my motion that I put out there. I take exception to your characterization let's, let's, of throwing let, out cards because this was an action by the board, uh, the majority of the board. Uh, but let, the, let me second it for discussion. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just for, to be in yeah, second. Okay. I was going to say that. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I, I take exception to your characterization that the cards were thrown up and that the process was not transparent. We've been through the process with the planning board for months. They've said what's needed to meet the bylaw. I don't need this. This. They said that we had to meet two to one. This board took an action that was within our uh, purview, um, and that was the vote that was taken. So, so that. to say that it was the action of any individual or that we weren't acting in the best interest of the town is absolutely That's not false. what I said. 
I said it came as a surprise to many people men, and everyone I've talked to said they didn't see it coming. That was the sentiment I was trying to put out there. I liken the deck of cards to I came home and everything was mass confusion. And so we're sweeping all those pieces up and trying to make sense of them right now and what the best way to move forward is. So this, um, the select board had taken a somewhat of a hands-off approach throughout the length of this planning process and mm -hmm. approval process. And we left it to the committees to get it done, to get through the select board, mm -hmm. uh, to the liaisons for the various building committees. Um, it didn't get done. We've been at, at this for months. So I that, understand that's that. why the majority took the action that we did last week. And so we would have loved to stay out of it and have this already be underway with the shovels on the ground, but that's not the case. So we're, we're dealing with what the situation that exactly. we have. But there is, but there is feel, no guarantee. And, and I feel exactly the same way. And you can't blame the select board for what the planning board did, okay? So you need to understand that first of all. Oh, I... Okay, I is that loud understand. and clear? Thank you. I do understand that, however, I think there could have been some discussion about how the select board felt with our committee. So this that is a we compromise have, that we came up with as a board, and this is the direction that we want to I take. understand that. And there's that. a lot of people angry with the planning board and with us now. I understand that. Well, there, there's just a lot of people who are angry, so if I can, um, I appreciate where Christian's Coming Everybody's from, trying I, to get everything done. Yeah, I still want to see on. them built. Hang on. I, I, I understand I don't want well. any more delay. I so want everybody to understand that. So in that spirit, in that spirit, um, and I, I, again, I appreciate where Christian's coming from. I wasn't necessarily ready to, to rescind any vote that was already taken, but what I would like to throw out, and maybe it's a friendly amendment to what Christian is offering, is that I do feel that um, we didn't have a, an appropriate full vetting that night um, because, you know, I, I had no idea that that motion was coming. And then there, there were some factual pieces of information. I don't know that they're wrong or right, you know, but, you know, coming up with square footages and things like that. Um, assumptions about cost reduction. And, and I think the issue that I, I really had because ultimately maybe this is the right thing to do, you know, going forward with reduced footprint. But um, there was another um, proposal that was intended to go to the planning board on Tuesday night that the planning board never had the opportunity to hear. And there's no question that it would have met the requirements as the OPMs and the building committees understood them that night. And since that time, you know, it, it, have permission to say this out loud now, um, the abutters um, have indeed entered into a transaction for the property next door and the purchaser, um, again, who has to go through a whole process of planning, was very willing to um, carve out some of that property to enhance the green space and resolve any potentially unresolved parking issues on that site. And I think, I think it's unfortunate that we didn't have the opportunity to present that because to Christian's point that would have been in accordance with the wishes of the voters, the overwhelming voters, <laughs> the majority. Um, and at that, if we could have that discussion and lay out the options, then I think we could come to a collective, intelligent, in the best interest of the community decision. We right can, now but it's- But ultimately it's the planning board's decision. Not ours, and we're trying our best but, but to But we compromise. just inserted ourselves into it, John. Yeah. Yes. By taking that vote, we inserted ourselves into the planning board process. And that's really what I've said to people I had more of an issue with is the fact that we, we broke process here. Um, we may not like what's happening with the planning board, but it's up to the planning board to do their job. You could argue that it's up to us to do ours, and if we felt at the majority that a compromise was in order, okay. But and I we think did. We're, we're, we we're like, last but week. there were two, we've been working for two years and we were one meeting away 
from having the opportunity to get approval so that we would immediately be moving forward with no additional cost. I think we owe it to the town of Hadley to see if that's going to work. If it and doesn't we, work, but then that's But there was fine. a misrepresentation of, and, and, and talking to Jim Maximoski, somebody had mentioned you only needed 800 square feet more, and that wasn't true. He doesn't know where anybody got that 800 square foot. So that was not going to be uh, something that the planning board was going to move on. And if you want the planning the, board to take a vote, we on, won't have any more so discussions on, for another on. three so years. So we were trying to... Christian and I are on these committees, so if you wanted information, you could come to the two of us. I, that, it's not me asking it, it's Jim Max. And I haven't talked to Jim Max, I'm asking, but the, but the issue had to do with whether or not the library building committee was going to agree with adding a couple of additional parking places on it, no, that they were there and then we took them out and then they wanted to put them back again to make sure that they met the requirement. But it still wasn't going to meet it unless you had the Dover Amendment and they no, were no, that's no, not, that true. That's not true. That that's untrue. absolutely yeah. not true. And that's why I'm saying here we're having this discussion. The planning board are the ones who need to be opining. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be making any assumptions about what they might do or they might think. We should, I believe, proceed with a joint meeting like we were planning to last week and let the chips fall if they say forget it then fine david's proposal i am all about reducing the size of it the problem is if we let the chips fall where they may uh, our options are to be uh, there's two things going on here if there's no vote our only recourse is to basically take it to court and we'll be tied up three to five years. You know who's going to defend the planning board because they've already said who they're going to hire to defend the planning board. Um, and you and where are they going to get the funding for that, David? Regardless of where the funding comes from, yeah. they'll find a way just like They would have to come to us for the funding. Unless he donates the time that's pro bono. But and, what I'm saying is could. it'll be three to five years tied up and we won't have a library or a senior center. Neither. Because so, for, but but on, you're I'm making a done. mental leap no, that we're no, going to Wait a minute. Wait. I'm not done yet. And our lenders, the banks that are underwriting our bonds, have said they will not let us lend us a penny for these projects as long as there's pending litigation. So that means that if there's a lawsuit from taxpayers, there's a lawsuit from the planning board, we're stuck with no senior center or library and we lose $3 million of grant funding. Over. So let me ask you this. Are you telling me in public that the planning board, five people on the planning board, have assured you that if in fact we reduce the size of that building to the square footage that you relayed that they will give you five votes no we don't have that assurance no we don't have that assurance so if that indeed has not happened we can go to the planning board we can do what we did last time take a straw vote right we can take the straw vote that we did and that that's what um, tom reedy had asked him to do last time when it was obvious that we weren't going to do that all we have to do is withdraw the application. We don't have to sue anybody. We, you know, if we want to choose to, we could, but I mean, we don't have to go down that path. But let, let's just see where it is. It's unclear what the target is we're shooting for. We had a strategy to meet the two for one parking. That seemed to be the target. If but, we but spend three to four months redesigning the- You're not meeting the two. Not. We, not without the door. We don't know yet. But we don't know yet. We weren't no, able to present that plan. And if I could finish, yeah. um, you know, we're going to be spending three to four months redesigning the entire senior center. That's a three to four month it delay. It should not take three to four months. Everything is it done could on be, computer today. Come it could on. be that, more that, money. That, it's going to be more so money, strange. more time, and we could be in the same boat. No, because we talked about today. that last night, didn't we? Well, that was the discussion about let's make sure we go to the 60 percent mm -hmm. so we have enough information to the planning board. But our emphasis is, I mean, the, especially with this new information that just came out, we really need to sit around with, with, with everybody and say, come on, let's get this, figure out what we can do at this meeting before we leave and say, let's get it done one way or the other. And if we cannot come up, because with this additional land, we do meet everything that's required. Is the plan? I think we should push the planning board to say, "Here's what we got now. This if, is what we're going to go for." But you can't do that until we actually know that we are going to get that in hand. 
that piece of property. But you're and you don't know, no, they've already said last night, you do not know what he is going to put on that piece of land because it is zoned business. Did they not say that last night? I, unfortunately, I wasn't there, but yeah. Yes. I do agree. So but we're not exactly sure what exactly going to But the library land. OPM, Mark Sullivan. It'll be a strip mall. But the library OPM, Mark Sullivan, in concert with working with the OPM for the senior center, told us Monday night that he didn't have any doubt that they were going to be able to meet the site plan requirements as articulated articulated without the Dover Amendment and there was no nothing being brought in for the adjacent land so I just go back to the question I asked last week I just don't understand why we wouldn't at least have gotten to the point where we tried it rather than we tried it for six months it was one meeting David come on it was one meeting that was scheduled Five days yeah yeah I mean and, and I that think that's the thing had. and that's what people are I'm hearing it from both sides. I hear people say that, oh yeah, I thought the thing was too big in the first place. I'm glad the select board voted the way they did. You, we all know that when we're walking around, most people don't have 25% of the facts that the rest of us have up here. So this would be a wonderful opportunity. And we still don't know how to plan anymore. And that's sure. what I'm saying. Then I, I, I'm just, I'm saying let's well, find out. This takes all, as David said last week, this takes all the the legal challenges. challenges out of the site completely. <laughs> How can we yeah. say that? Where's How, the attorney yeah. in the room? Is that anybody can sue for anything, and a butter can complain and say well, that the drainage isn't proper. I'm well, so get the extra land donated from the buyer there, the purchaser. Uh, great. Then we have more parking space or more green space for the site, and. Uh, more more space to work with but until we have that in hand which we don't uh and and this 800 feet that we keep being told and that we're meeting the requirements according to the planning board we're not and we're we're having a discussion without the opm for the library in the room without the opm for the senior center community the senior one. community center in no they're not the same uh, one. Oh, the library no we have mark sullivan from right. da sullivan on one side and then we've got It'll phil from up. colliers on the other side mm -hmm. they've been working they were one meeting away from resolving the issue, and Mark, it, again, he's fine. I mean, he's for the library, so we have the meeting, and we're just continuing along our merry way. But he very emphatically said that, wow, we were like an hour away from being able to present them with a plan that worked. I'm really surprised. Why didn't you guys just let us bring it to the meeting? It was just a question, and I think it was a reasonable question. And I don't feel like I'm in a position to be making structural mandates on a building. I don't think anybody at this table should. Why not just, and my, my friendly amendment to Christian's motion would be to delay implementation of the select board mandate until after we've had a joint meeting with the planning board and the appropriate parties in the room to just put it to bed once and for all. And if it's obvious at that meeting that it's a no-go, I'm completely on board. I'm, you're not going to hear me talk about it again. Can I add to that? Um, I'm not quite sure how um, the, the figure of 10,350 square feet came up. Um, but it wasn't based on anything programmatically um, insofar as the use of the building. It was just lumping off a bunch of square footage that they felt more comfortable with, I'm assuming. Does that sound reasonable? No. 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 They actually knew exactly what they were cutting off and how it would affect the functioning of programming and... No, what the dimensions were to make the building work on the existing site that we have to work with meeting the parking requirements, the green space requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Just like Kimmy and but, but where did that number come from? Did That's, an engineer come up with that number? number? It came from the planning board. An engineer that did they, the civil engineering? I mean, who, who on the planning board is a civil believe, engineer that's in I charge of site the, plans? I believe David from the building committee, he had, uh, that was his original yeah. number also yeah. for that. Yeah, to it's, fit on it's that based lot. on the percentages of zoning. And, and, and you it's have not to say how the inside of the building is going to be no, used. No, it has nothing to do with that. What we're doing is, is trying to make the building work on the site. 
years. All How you years. use it is up to the senior center and the committee. But then why don't we just hire David Tudring to do the engineering for us if he knows all the answers instead of hiring all these other people to do it? Well, you know, he's the 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 not the right thing to I mean, say either. But, but, but I, I'm just saying. He's on the building committee. I, and I have no problem with him. Well, I'm just saying say these that. numbers so, come out there and how do we run with them? I'll tell you how the numbers come about. It's pretty simple. You have X amount of square feet for a property. The first thing you do is take 20% of that X for green space. All right? You take, now what you were supposed to do was take the building and have a number for the building and double that for the parking. But if you do all those numbers, it comes out 110%. So what you do is you, you go back to the building after you take that 20% off for green space, they say, okay, the building can only be this big if I have to have two, uh, two times the, the parking. That's a simple number. That's how they came up with that number. It's but, a that's, very, but that's a simple calculation. These guys are doing detailed drawings. It's a difference there. That's right. Two separate topics. Though. Yeah, it's two separate topics. Yeah. So the, the issue is those are the basic numbers you work with. Okay, but when it gets to design, those numbers start Mo moving. moving according to yeah, yeah yes. move according to what you want to design and everything else. But the basic number is very simplistic. The problem that we have, and it's something that should be redone, is if you add up all those percentages, it doesn't come to a hundred. It comes to one hundred and ten percent, which is <laughs> kind of silly. So, you know, the number should, the percentages should be changed. But again, we're said. not going to be able to resolve that. But no, that no, idea. but it's a simple That's number. A I, I, it's a basic number. Right. That's I, how the number came. And you know what the, the library is, so you subtracted all of it, and you get what the library, uh, the, the senior center is. That's what it is. So, in the spirit of both what John said during the meeting last week about you know, you reduce the size of the building and then later on you come to regret it and then what do you do? I've Partially. Said that, I've said that right along. I know. Real fire substation. Right, senior center, so in that library. spirit, as well as in the spirit of, um, we hired the designers that we hired because they specialize in designing senior usage buildings. So your hallways are going to be wider so that a somebody pushing a wheelchair and somebody assisting somebody else walking can all transit the hallway at one time. Um, things like that. So to, to the point of um, wanting to sit down in the room together and discuss possibly what will work, um, you know, I'd like to take those programmatic things that are use specific and goal oriented to the Hadley seniors and try and come up with the best case scenario, understanding that the planning board wants to see a reduction in the size of the building, but still meeting those programmatic goals so that we don't have to worry 10 years down the That's line. That's the building committee and you. That's not and, us. Uh, but you're saying, We're, and I'm hearing from you, that you know, if we get those parties all together and throw, you know, talk about all of these different pieces, maybe it won't be, you know, um, 10,350 that they're okay with. Maybe they'll be okay with 10,800 and it'll still work and we won't have to cut a program out. So let's, we're not going to resolve this. Tonight. I know, I just wanted to make so, it very So I'm going, to, I'm, ma I'm going to make a suggestion okay. that we have a member from the planning board, the building committee, us, and the senior center committee meet and talk about this Okay. and see what actually needs to be done next before any other decisions are made. I think that's great. 
So no motions, no nothing tonight. Well, I, I think the it's on the question. Table. If you want to vote on it again, that's yeah. fine. I'm not changing my vote on it at this point. Well, I'm I'm not either, but I'm just <laughs> saying in the spirit of things, instead of going through all this, can't we just in the building committee? Uh, because they're the ones that you know will review the project also, which they would like they want to do. They didn't have that opportunity. They were saying, correct? Right, correct. The last time, so I mean, they we did want to have that opportunity to review. We want to try to control what is actually done by the architect before uh, until we get that that okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to point out one thing that's that that really complicated this whole thing has to do with the parking. The problem with our bylaw, this two to one, it doesn't give you any definition what it is. This site is very complicated. So when you look at it, you have these roads, entrance roads and everything else. Well, if you have a simple drive in and drive out and a big parking lot, it's a simple number. But the, the problem that we got into is what do you, of all this blacktop and all this area that you drive in and out of to get to the parking, what do you actually add and what do you actually do not, um, what you do, what sh should you not add to that number of that two, two square, uh, two times uh, you building mean like entering the entryways? Yeah, that's where this whole thing went south. It went very complicated. Because, uh, and I will, uh, there was a lot of discussion to me at the very beginning of this whole project from the engineers. What do you guys include when it comes to this? two times the parking. And I, I've looked at the other projects that we have down the road and I said, this is how it's been looked at. Unfortunately, this is so complicated because you have all these drive-throughs, it's open to interpretation. So as soon as you start taking this, the, the square footage of these entrance roads out, it reduces the number of the building. So this is where this number keeps on flowing back and forth, and that number that you said, the, the 800, mm -hmm. that's the problem that we're faced. Every single time you change that parking lot, those numbers change. Mm -hmm. And that's is where we start talking about, hey, maybe it's time to change the bylaw to what everybody else has. This is... This is a use, this is the number of parking spaces required. Well, and and, and as you know, that's where we are, but I think we need to sit around the table and have a compromise. This number is going to keep on flowing back and forth. There's got to be an end to this because uh, they're, they're looking at it too finitely and say, come on guys, let's try to resolve this somehow. Right, but they're, again, they're not going to do that for this fall town meeting i mean we had already no we can't do that but i think we we need to look at this project and and try to say to them all right we'll go, if we get this other land if we got everything else mm -hmm. what's how can we get this vote through and it might be reducing the project building size it might be just a little bit we have to sit around and come up with these numbers and say this is our goal and then go and figure out what that schedule is going to be and make sure that we get these votes in and get everything else done so we're not getting we into a problem. We've been three or four years on this and we're to this point and the planning board couldn't have stuck their nose in and said, hey, look, we got this bylaw, let's get it straightened out. And it's come down to this. And it's, yeah, it's, and it's unfortunate. It's a complicated site. It's very tight. We all know it, and but it, the, unfortunately, this this was not the project to try to resolve these That's issues on. Right. And but we're here, but we got to try to figure out how do we do how to do this. And it's it's only sitting around the table because, you know, uh, everybody now people want to go to the zoning board. And it's not going to be the way to handle this. Everybody wants to, I mean, again, people are just angry, which is which mm -hmm. is my argument about we have a democracy, we have an open town meeting, we have an elected planning board, we have an elected select board, we appointed building committees. 
We don't want to turn people away from wanting to volunteer. The town runs on volunteers. The, the action that the select board took, I'm afraid, <coughs> well intentioned, it unintentionally disrespected all of the people who have been working on this for two to no, three. No, that's not the way I, I I'm saying that's how, peop yeah, that's I, how people, that's I know, how people, that's how people And I talked to a lot of people it. and I said, you know, a, a lot of people uh, were disconnected, the people that have contacted me so far, and they don't have all the facts. That's a Just like we don't have all the facts. Like right you now. said, which is everybody's. Which is the point about yeah, having yeah. everybody in the it's same, exactly. same room. And, and as I open. said from the beginning last week, you took a 12, eight, from an 8 to a 12,000 square foot building and put it on a piece of property that it didn't wasn't going well, to first fit. Of all, I didn't do anything. Well, I'm saying that's, how, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what happened to begin with. Yeah. So and it just wasn't going to fit the bylaws, and I said it last week, that we have to respect what our bylaws here in that. town. I understand that. So you can't just put a building there thinking you're going to be able to change the bylaws no, at your will. I'm not asking to no, change. No, but that's what it seemed like. And the taxpayers you're taking a 12, all those bylaws in, too. You know, that they took the an 8 to a 12,000 square foot building and put squeezed it on this property and didn't have what they actually needed to have. And I blame the architect for that. I think that they should have been more on board to know what our bylaws are and know that that wasn't going to meet specifications to beat that piece of property. Well, and the defense of And I'm mad them, at them for that. And the they, defense of that is our bylaw isn't that exact enough right. for them. And, and there and was different, opinions yeah, the different opinions on, on, yeah. on I, how those numbers were coming out. And there's the problem. So, there were a lot of ambiguities so I think um, I appreciate your suggestion to get us all in one room for a last shot to see if you know that'll give me time to the bottom line is Susan is that and I've said this to people on the phone we want to build the best building that we can for our seniors that is still the goal yes. thank you I appreciate of this of this committee that. and it's never been to just put something slipshod on there, just because that, that we're going against Listen, the original. Listen, my mother bent my ear for years about it, and then my father started bending my ear for years about so it. So we still so want I, to do I the right thing, is putting in a Center good in building. A library at all. Okay, so, so just what's the plan? Then? So, so that, you're, yeah, you're so, suggesting what? So I've, I've said it earlier in my presentation is that that, that which one? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, just in terms of coordinating the finances alone, we need to coordinate all these projects. And I would throw this, the fire substation in there as well. Mm -hmm. So a meeting with the fire substation, the library, the senior center. No, uh, no, not, not the not fire substation. The fire substation. They're, they're, they're all, not in on this. They're all set on their own. That's We're just doing this piece yeah, of property, yeah. please. You're talking about financing one. So, <laughs> they're talking about knowing what's going to happen when so that we can the we can, we can deal with that later. Yeah, this is we want to do right. do mm -hmm. this piece now. This is just, just the planning yeah. Yeah. Uh, size. So we need we need a meeting because we don't know what to borrow. At some point. But but so Joyce like Joyce it. proposed yeah. that rather than ha go forward with a full select board full planning board meeting that I we were agree. going to have on Tuesday, I think of what I heard you say was you're mm -hmm. suggesting that a subgroup get together with mm -hmm. representatives. I mean the two OPMs have got to be in that yeah. room, mm -hmm. yeah. and then whoever else you want mm -hmm. to hash out whether or not at least get enough facts on the table so that before we just automatically go down the ten thousand. 350 square foot path that at least everybody talks about the pros and cons of it so that coming out of that there will be more clarity on whether or not we should reconsider the plan a or proceed accordingly with the vote the select board and go to the reduced site what and there might even come a middle ground out of that converse out of that if conversation the OPM's doing his job he should come up with something pretty quickly to resolve this issue. He knows what the footprints are supposed to be. He knows what the size of the property is supposed to be. He should have done this originally. Right? Well, that's I what strongly yeah. suggest we yeah. stop. There yeah. are, as we've said repeatedly, there is so much blame to be shared and go around here. Let's not pin it on anybody. Let's just all hold hands and say, boy, we blew it. 
okay? Let's just work together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just work together. Let it work together. Let's just get to the table one last time. Communication. And, and agree on the stuff that needs to happen to make it happen. Great. Right. Okay. Are you withdrawing Thank motion? You. Are we voting? Or how are we doing? I'm not withdrawing motion, but it seems like the vote is. Well, I, well, I, we'll or go we can ahead. amend it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to withdraw it for right now, we could until we have this round meeting and see where we go. I would like to keep the original vote in place until we all talk about it, and then we can decide what's going to be best for everybody. I'm good with that. that. that, that maybe I can amend it to be something along the lines of to de delay the vote until we're able to have one last meeting to address the issue and see if we can come to a consensus on what square footage the building needs to be to meet the requirement. Well, I, I think until we have the meeting, it, then we just need to leave it in place. You want to just leave it in place? Leave it in place until we can have the meeting and then if we need Come to back. absolve it or do we need to do something with it and okay. we can get a good handle on where everybody is at right now i think yep. that would be a better thing for and everybody you are, and you are meeting next wednesday, wednesday. Night? Yep. yes so but the planning board said that they were meeting next tuesday, tuesday. They, have a posted agenda on um, tuesday. they have a posted agenda on tuesday so um maybe they could do like a tri board and they can start at six <laughs> Actually, oh, but we're, actually you just we're a week ahead of time. Why don't we want. post our meeting with the planning board and discuss it? But well, you get, you, or Joyce was suggesting that we, that was what I was saying, but Joyce is saying no, not to do a full meeting. Well, you know, I, if you have a full board with everybody, I think it, I think, I, I, just get it all out right now and get it over. It, with. It, it stops any second guessing, is what it does, is if everybody's there. But so are you talking, are you talking about having us there and the library there is that what you're talking about or are you talking about just the planning board and the select board, board the planning board and the select board since in the building committee in the building committee because that's what really matters is us meeting the planning board bylaw or the planning bylaws and determining how we're going to proceed certainly with representation from well, I think the, the OPMs, OPMs they have the technical way. drawings I mean so that way if there's any question about the interpretation and both OPMs have been talking directly with the planning board, so I, I, there shouldn't be any misinterpretation. At least then the planning board would know. Is this a follow-up to the roundtable discussion? I'm not understanding. Well, it. we were discussing whether to do it's a full one. or a select, one or the other. I thought you well, I, I was point. thinking about, we thought everybody should meet some representatives from each board. That's what the uh, building well, committee Well, I mean, that was about. our our thought process, but, you know, it's really up to you guys on what you think would be the quickest way to resolve this whole thing. So when do we want to meet ahead of, of going to the planning board? They're expecting someone to be there Tuesday night, correct? Oh, I'm going to be there. For the planning board? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, but I thought maybe we talked about we should meet before yeah but you don't have much time it might be time. wise just to, to hash like you hash it out at the planning board have everybody there well it might be the only way to do it at this point we can do that if too. they're talking about it on the 18th you want to talk about it on the 18th. what do you got to offer I'll just you want to get your plane overload I've heard so many things here okay mm -hmm. so we have two building committees but now we have the municipal building committee which previously hasn't taken a role but now wants to take a role uh, we were going to talk about a small getting a group. small group together so help. that we it's could they want to help and now we're talking about meeting with the planning board so I'm not what? I don't get it. What are we doing? Well, we're wanting to meet so that we can hash this out and come to a conclusion of what we need to do. So that we can all and planning board has to be involved with that to help us move yeah. in the right direction of what yeah. we need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Building committee wants to be a part of it so they can review the plans to make sure things are... Yeah, we're just concerned about how far the plans got too quickly mm -hmm. and um, created a, a 
big issue. I mean, quite honestly, I had those the the plans before we even had too many planning board meetings, and that's 100% done. It's a lot of money spent. A lot of money spent. A lot of time spent. And I can understand their point of view on not wanting to go back with all this. So, so you know, let's try to get everybody together. So you want to have a full blown planning board meeting next Tuesday yeah, with I, all of us? I think, you know, we were going to do it on the 11th, so we might as well just do it next Tuesday if the planning board will agree, if Jimmy agrees with Joyce and he's willing to do that, and then just get it over and so done with. full committees in attendance. Well, whoever wants to be there. Yeah. I'll go but, Tuesday. But the, the big thing will be the OPMs. I mean, you're going to want Mark and Phil with whoever they need to present. And they've got to be there anyway. The plan A. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think the goal needs to be meeting the strict letter of whatever's required and laying that out on the table. Absolutely. Rather, rather than lobbying for he specific said, he said, he said, wants and, and, and then like we're that. all we're yeah. all we're all gonna hear it. So right. we need okay. the, we need yeah. the post exactly. for us to be at the meeting next Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday okay. at seven here. <coughs> uh, you don't need to. I'll, I'll call Jen in the morning and tell her. We're going to FaceTime. 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 My big question to the planning board on Tuesday is, have you interpreted this number the same way all the time for the last 10 years? And I want an answer from you. And again, what I'm going to tell you is it's such a complicated site with these roads intertwined I, with the plan. There's the problem. We've all had we some pretty simple ones. Home Depot, we ran through the Lowe's. We, I, I know, I've been with you on some yeah. of them, you know. And they've gotten complicated, but they've had the land to deal with. All right, so let's yeah. plan on the planning board mm -hmm. Tuesday night. Okay. Get things laid out on the table. If we have to meet after that, yep. then we should sit down we definitely after will. that. Yeah. I think that's a good thing for us to do. Okay, yeah. great. I'm good with that. All right. Open communication so with everybody. Let's do it with your motion. <laughs> I will, I'll, I'll, I'll just drop it for right now, and then we can pick it up. It sounds like it's okay to bring it up at a later date, so I think it's really great to have this meeting and okay. proceed forward and, and I'll withdraw we can make motions. Yeah. I'll withdraw. Yeah. Withdraw. I'll withdraw. Okay. Right. So we'll and I hold no ill will toward David Tudrin, so just so <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got heated in the moment, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> he could have said Mickey Mouse and I would have said the same thing. <laughs> he does a great service to this town. Yeah. I hate to say what I've said. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, any announcements tonight? Oh, gosh, David had most of the ones I, we did, I knew of. We did the yeah, Chook and the Go yeah. Sunday. 21st. Um, and the 21st is the fire, fire. Uh, yeah. chicken uh, dinner. I would just like to notify the select board that the Senior Center is planning on having a kind of going away reception for Rep Slybeck. Mm -hmm. in December oh, nice. for his last yes. office hour there oh, mm -hmm. and I would love it if the community came and you, if you all wanted yeah. to say whatever it is that you would like to convey before he yeah. moves on down to Florida yeah. um, certainly has been a big supporter of right. this so yeah. we're planning that right now so <laughs> You know, if you have ideas around that or want to be specifically included, please let us know. Is it going to be a daytime thing? Or? Yes, but around lunchtime. Oh, all right. Let me know. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks for setting that up. The only thing I have: bottle and can drive October sixth, nine to four, every elementary to benefit preschool. Okay. Okay. Preschool. Yep. And uh, elementary. Yeah. I guess instead of announcing a dad as well. I'll announce my friend's birthday today. So it's Sarah Weinzig's birthday. If uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> if she uh, is still up at this hour, happy birthday. And if you haven't wished her a happy birthday, give her a call tomorrow and say happy belated birthday. So hope your day was a good one.
Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.